Uh, welcome. Yeah, Lengiwe, hi. Yeah, Lengiwe was here earlier, so we, we said hello with, with her. So that's good. So welcome, everybody. Um, I think we need to start now. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Irene Maweu. I am from Image Africa. And today we have uh, Zaid, uh, who will be taking us through Drawing for Learning, Teaching and Innovation. And Zaid um, Ali Azgoff is a learning innovation specialist with over 15 years experience in tertiary and corporate education. He is the founder and CEO of AQL Learning Innovation Consultancy, which provides training and consultants in learning innovation, drawing, visual note taking, educational technology, memory improvement, spe uh, speed smart reading and thinking skills, and much more. So I think we are really, really happy to have you, Zaid. And remember, he's the one who took us through the, the, the PowerPoint, how to make PowerPoint fun. So I think we are going to have fun today. Welcome, feel free and, and, and ha come with an open mind, an open heart, uh, ready to play. So over to you, Zaid. We are happy to okay. have you here. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning uh, to everyone. Uh, yeah, in Malaysia, it's good noon or afternoon. So just welcome. Uh, first, I would like to say thank you for Emerge Africa for inviting me again. Uh, this time, I'm not going to talk about PowerPoint. Uh, I'm going to talk about power, but no points. Uh, so, but before I do that, uh, I want to just share my screen first. And let's just shoot here. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Right. I need to move the chat. Can you just, we just use a Y or yes, you can see my screen. Yes, Is we it do. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, we great, do. great, great. Yes. Uh, so we'll use the chat to discuss most things. I mean, it's good to give the the video camera, but the thing is it slows down the process. So, okay. So basically the title of my uh, session today is actually, it's going to be two hours. You can run away after one hour, but uh, I like to usually have a two hour session because I don't, I might never see you guys again. So I like to share as much as possible, but there's also be a lot of activities. So the title today is actually drawing for learning, teaching and innovation. So I'm going to focus on how you can use drawing for learning purposes, which is especially for people that are learning, mostly students, but also everyone is learning, self-learning and lifelong learning. And then how you can use drawing for teaching, okay, which I'm doing now. As you see, I'm going to be using my drawings for teaching whatever I'm going to teach uh, throughout the whole day. And then how to use drawing for innovation. Uh, I think drawing is an exceptional tool. If you look at most of the inventors and innovators, they, they most of them started with a sketch. They didn't start building cars and airplanes and spaceships. They started actually, they had an idea and then they put it to paper somehow or now they put it in using a stylus. But they, 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 most ideas come from sketches usually. So if you cannot draw, it's going to actually hamper you to come up with uh, ideas on the fly. You have to always, you can only put into words, but you cannot put things into visuals. So it's very important to, to have that skill to draw. Uh, it's not about drawing art, but it's about drawing to express, to communicate or to, to, to illustrate your ideas. So I'm going to show you something. Uh, you see a drawing here, uh, and I'm going to ask you, what do you see in this drawing? Or what do you see? There's a big drawing here. What do you see? Let's see if you see what I see. <laughs> this is a drawing I did uh, two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. So what do you see? We can answer in the chat. What do you see in this drawing? Amusement park, okay. Francisco says amusement park. What else? It's something deeper. Ah, Tony Carr is coming. What do you see? Anyone else? What do you see? A journey of discovery, as Catherine or Kath Fortune, or oh, nice name, Fortune. Uh, <laughs> Kath, I'll call you Kath. A journey of discovery. What if I give you a hint? Uh, this drawing actually is uh, a way I is in a visual that if you understand this drawing, a lot of things come to your mind. There is actually the person in the drawing is somebody but was very creative in history. A person that was very creative in history. Think about one of the most creative persons in history. And he's somehow in this drawing. I'm not saying I draw him like he is, but is a cartoon version of him. So who is he? 
Leonardo. See? So when I gave a hint, it's like, okay, it's Leonardo, okay? So now we know, okay. Now when you see the drawing, do you see different? It's Leonardo da Vinci. Now what are the other items in the drawing? What are they? What are they representing? If you know a bit about Leonardo da Vinci, something, might, something becomes more familiar. <laughs> except my, except well, maybe my drawing is so bad, it doesn't make, but it should make some sense. What are the little items you see there? Mona Lisa, innovation, elements of thought process. See? see, first it was just nothing, but as I give hints to the drawing, you start seeing things. Actually, when I drew this in mind, uh, I drew, uh, I read about Leonardo da Vinci's ideas because he used to put things, he used to draw things and, sketch and, and, and describe things and his ideas. And actually many of his great ideas are in this drawing. Of course, Mona Lisa, you can see here, but also he used to love drawing horses and he had the, very interested. He draw. He talked about tanks. He talked about helicopters. He talked about airplanes. He talked about parachutes in his own way. He talked about a cannon that can shoot. You just fire once and it shoots three, 32 of these man's monster balls in one shot. He had this kind of weaponry. He had a mobile bridge. He talked about smart cities. He talked about this master shield, a superhero shield. So in other words, one of the powers of drawing, especially in terms of memory and remembering is to put things into pictures and have it as a visual memory like this drawing here is in my memory now uh, and that's one of the powers uh, with drawing it's not just you draw it doesn't matter how you draw but when you draw and you have it it becomes a meaningful so in other words say that i've read about leonardo da vinci 500 pages in this drawing actually is the most important key points or key concepts or key ideas in this drawing so by looking at this drawing these, these things here will trigger, even he talked about time. So all these things will trigger him to, uh, I, sorry, there's some popping up here. It will trigger you to remember it. So this is a, one of the powers of drawing because I used to study some of the world champions of memory. And one of the tricks about memory is that you need to, if you want to keep a concept, an idea, an, a word in memory, you need to visualize it, bring it to life. And it, the more vivid it is, the more memorable in terms of long term it will be. So this is just an example of that, that I put into drawing. So say that I wanted to give a speech about Leonardo da Vinci, I could use this drawing actually as a reference. I don't even need to have probably the, if I was going to talk about 15 innovations by him or in ideas by him, I can just have this drawing and I can give the speech and I don't need to read the notes and so on. So this is just one example of how uh, drawings can be applied to the learning process. Uh, okay, let's go here. Okay. I have a group here, I will share later, this group here, you can, uh, I have a group, a Facebook group, also dedicated to drawing. I'm not so active on it now, but I still share things about uh, people that are innovating in terms of drawing, applying it to teaching and learning. Okay, so I want to ask you, and you can answer in the chat box, can you draw or not? And whether you can draw or not, I want you, to, if, can you if you now can get a pen or a marker pen or a stylus, or anything, I want you to draw. I'm going to ask you to draw something. But in the, in the meantime, can you put in the, in the chat whether yes or no, whether you can draw? Can you draw or not? Yes or no? Uh, Muhammad Ahmad cannot draw. Yes, you can. <laughs> Let's find out. Yes. Cherry Hugo says, yes, you can draw. So, yeah. Uh, Kate Fortune, I think I can. Okay. I think, therefore, I am. <laughs> Oh, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Okay, let's, we will do, do you mind doing a test? <laughs> let's do a test, okay? I'm going to give you a test. Is that okay? Okay, let's do it. Okay, okay. Uh, let's do the test. Are you ready? One, two, three. Okay. I need to change my pointer, sorry. Uh, Okay, so I need to escape here. Uh, okay, sorry, I need to do this. Uh, when you use a laser pointer, somehow it doesn't work. So, okay, okay, ready? Okay, you got your pen ready? Yes or no? You got your pen and paper or whatever you're doing? <laughs> okay, let's start. Huh? This is the first you have to draw. Irene, I expect to see your drawing. After you have to show on the video what you have drawn. Huh? <laughs> okay, let's start. Okay, I want you to draw this first. Can you draw this? I think most people can draw this. Okay, I'll try. We are ready. Cat, Cat Fortune is always ready. That's great. <laughs> I think everybody can draw this right. 
And I want you to try to guess what we're drawing. Eh? It'll be quite interesting whether you know what you're drawing or not. <laughs> okay, let's draw some more. Okay, let's do it. Uh, uh, okay, can you draw this or not? Oh, let me just. Uh, uh, can you draw this? I think you can. <laughs> Okay, let's continue a bit. Okay. Can you guess what you're drawing or not? Anybody can guess what they're drawing? <laughs> so one of the things you must learn about drawing is that if you break down drawings, actually most drawings, especially for teaching are very basic, anybody can learn how to do it if they just know how to strategically break them down and analyze them in terms of shapes. Huh? But we'll go through that, okay? Okay, continue. Oh, no. <laughs> I really want to. Okay. Okay. Well, let's just go here. Okay. Have you managed to draw this? Smiling face. Okay. Can you guess what you're drawing or not? <laughs> I think if you saw the picture, you might not be able to get Yeah. Now I think you should know what you're drawing, but I want you to draw it. I just want to prove to you that you can draw simple things and you don't have, usually don't have to draw much more sophisticated things for teaching and learning. Okay, let's continue. Okay, what are you drawing? <laughs> ah, you know, Pink Panther. <laughs> okay, let's continue our drawing. Okay, I think something is happening here. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> Okay, let's continue a bit more. I should draw it live actually. It's not a problem for me to draw this on live. Do you know what you're drawing or not? <laughs> okay, now I'm coloring. You don't need to color because that's not expected to you. But I was just coloring it to show. Uh, so now I'm coloring it so you don't have to do that. So we just watched the last part. Uh, but you don't have to, I don't expect you to color, especially if you only have a pen. Uh? But I expect you to do the lines, uh? at least you can do the lines. Okay. Okay. Uh, I give you another 30 seconds, but I want you afterwards, what we can do for fun, uh, we put the, I'm not really good at this camera, everybody's camera here. I want you to show, open your video and everybody can show their nice drawing <laughs> just to share. It, I think one of the things about drawing, you have to have fun and don't take your drawings too seriously. Uh, and I'm sure they're good already. So maybe you can share your drawings here, open your video and share. Wow, okay. I, I want you to, everybody to show at the same time, then we can have a nice screenshot. Uh, if Irena can do a screenshot, let me just hide this. Huh? Wow, look at that. Francis Cole is very nice. Lucy, my Chris. Wow, okay. Can we have some other, other ones, dare, daring, daring people? <laughs> okay, just rest your lungs. I want to take a screenshot of everybody showing their Pink Panther. It'll be very nice, those who are, are daring enough. Wow, so many people do. Oh, look at that. Somebody colored. I think, is that somebody coloring there? Okay, very nice. Okay, Cherry Hogo. I can see. Can you put I, it closer? I, yeah. Irena, where's your drawing? I, I, <laughs> I think you need to stop sharing so that everybody can be on the screen at the same okay, time. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank yes, you. I will yes, stop yes, sharing. Yes. I'll stop sharing. Let, let's yes, do this. So that the, wh so. whoever can come on the screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah we can do a then screenshot. It's possible. Oh, okay, yes, great. I can do a screenshot. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay, let's so do, we do a nice screenshot. Whoever has drawn, yes. <laughs> okay, let me do a let do my original. You can do a uh, screenshot or yeah, I can do that. I, yeah, someone, yeah, we do. Let me keep think? a memory. At least you have one memory. Let me do my pink panther. Let me find my pink panther, the original. <laughs> okay, wait. Ah, where's okay? Then. Ah, okay. Hey. Yes, okay. Okay, everybody on the <laughs> screen. My name. Wow, well, everybody, whoever dares. <laughs> What about Diana Chago or Lucia Maris? <laughs> okay, at least we have those uh, top there. Can we have two more to share? We have there. Anyone else? Well, it's I really nice. Here. The drawings are very good. I mean, oh, Prashila is showing here. Anyone else uh, have the? We got how many has managed to share the drawings? Sherry Hogo is showing. Wow, 
Can you try to bring close to the screen so everybody can see your drawings? <laughs> Gabriel, I see all your drawing. Let it go. <laughs> I tell you, all of your drawings are really nice. Huh? Look at that. Very nice. Okay, who else wants to share? Uh, can you do a sh uh, oh, Muhammad Ahmad? Where's your drawing? <laughs> okay, so can we do a uh, can you do, Irene? Can you do a screenshot? But so we're losing somebody here. I'm going to share with through a WhatsApp group. Okay, we okay, do a screenshot you. now. I think it's gone forever. I think but at least we got very good. We had about uh, one, we had about twelve people that actually drew. I'm sure there are more that drew, but there are twelve people that have the confidence to show their own drawing, which is very nice. Okay, the, you got a screenshot or not? Uh, Gabriel, you need to stop the screen sharing. Just share your, oh, your drawing. Oh, Gabriel is screen sharing. Yeah, Gabriel, you need to stop screen sharing, please. You can block him? Okay, you can't, Irene, you can't stop his sharing. I can do that. Well, it, uh, okay. it's, yeah, so uh, we are back. Okay, nice, please. very nice. Now, a final uh, one, a final one. I, Irene, if you do a gallery view, then you can see everyone's at the same time on the screen. Yeah, I'm seeing now everyone yes, at the same time. Yes, I'm seeing time. everyone. It just okay, that uh, Gabriel was sharing the... the very yeah. nice. Sorry. Hugo is coming forward. Oh, yes, very nice. Okay, take a screenshot. We've got three rows. That's more, and more than I expected. <laughs> okay, you got a screenshot? Yes. Uh, okay, I think the Mefeke, Mefeke is, is becoming invisible because you're using the background. <laughs> She's using the background. Okay, okay, there comes the. Okay. This virtual background will take away your masterpiece. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's enough. Okay, we have to go forward. Okay, okay thank you very much, everyone. Okay, this is, uh, this is your test. You're passing that you're already you're proven that you can draw. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for participating uh, in the drawing, little drawing exercise. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, this is what you were trying to draw and all of you did very well. Uh, so for those of you that are not uh, comfortable, uh, do you feel a bit more comfortable about drawing now? Where's the chat? Let me just get the chat. Uh, participants. Okay, where's the chat? Uh, okay. 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 I just want to have the chat open there. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. That's good. Uh, I see here uh, some people liked the exercise. Uh, surprised myself. Joycey, uh, Francisco, good exercise here. Yeah. That's it, I'm gonna talk for two hours now. <laughs> okay, so, so the thing is, one of the things that I usually do is, is, is to try to make drawing fun and, and try to prove to you that you can draw. The two parts that stop people from drawing usually is that they don't think they can draw. And the second thing is uh, that they don't think they're creative. Uh, and I think both things can be overcome hopefully by this workshop. And you, you're not drawing to become an artist, you're just drawing so you can use it for your teaching, learning, and if you invention or research and so on. Okay, so the three rules. Huh? The one is everyone can. Can you fill in the blanks or not? Everyone can. Progress comes with. Have fun. The last one is, is usually adults struggle a bit with that, but I think this group is okay. Number one is draw, yes. Everyone can draw. <laughs> Progress comes with. Practice. A lot of people say, I cannot draw. And I ask them, do you draw? No, I don't draw. I mean, how can you expect people to know how to draw if they don't draw? Anything you have to do, any skill, you have to practice a bit to at least become to a certain level. Okay. Thank you very much, Sophia and Prashila and Muhammad Ahmad. Yes. Number two is probably, number three is have fun drawing. Eh? Jai's already asked. Because <laughs> this is the thing that stops me. Most people are drawing because they're so scared, especially when they go to class. They want to, sometimes I'm teaching anatomy. I want to draw the body or draw the brain. I'm so scared to do mistake. People are going to laugh at me. It doesn't look like the brain. Uh, the key first here is to practice at home. So you make sure that it's, you have your own whiteboard. So you make sure it's reasonably understandable. Check it with your friends. But drawing is an extremely powerful tool for teaching. Eh? And it's a powerful tool to simplify things. It's a powerful tool to engage people. It's a powerful tool to even inspire people to learn something. Eh? So it's very, uh, thank you, Gabriel. Yeah? It's very important to learn to use it. Not just use the whiteboard, but use it, the whiteboard vision. Especially when doing storytelling. Stick figures is really powerful for storytelling. Okay. We're going to have another exercise, but this one you do on your own. I'm going to share with you the link in the, huh? 
I'm going to screen share. Let me just show you how it works. I'm going to share in the, because the most important thing in drawing when I teach drawing is not about how beautiful the drawing is. Does the drawing communicate what you want? I mean, communicates the learning outcome or the concept, the idea. If it does that, you have achieved your goal in your drawing. It's not about being a Mona Lisa or anything. It's just to communicate what you want to communicate. Okay. Uh, and also, yes, Jaiso says also overcomes copyright. So I've given you a link here. I'm going to do screen sharing again, and I'm going to show you how it works, and I want you to try it also, okay? Let me just do screen sharing. I just want to show you how it works. Okay, uh, uh, let's do screen share. I'm going to screen share the web. Okay, I'm going to share this. This is a really fun uh, exercise. You can do it after this. We can do it now also, just see how you do. It's a quick draw. What it does, it asks you to draw something and it uses artificial intelligence to guess what you're drawing. In other words, you can test yourself whether you can draw. So let me just show how it works. Can you see my screen now? Can you see quick draw? Can you just say yes or no? So I know I'm, uh, okay, yes, okay. So I click now, let's draw. So now it says, draw a hammer, got it. So now I need to draw a hammer. You can use a mouse, you can use a pen. So I'm gonna draw a hammer and it will try, and it will try to guess. It's a mushroom, I, okay. <laughs> broccoli <laughs> so you have to do it within 15 seconds ah okay so i fail okay so now it asks me to draw a clock so i draw a clock it's it's a clock so you guess correctly okay so it asks you to draw a tree it will ask you to draw various things you try to play in the game it's really fun i gave him the link up there Bush, not a bush. I'll try to draw a tree. Ah, leave it. Leave it. <laughs> I fail, okay. <laughs> so now I'll ask you to draw a golf club. So you keep on. This is a good way to practice your simple drawings. The idea here is actually, I see. it's a golf club. So you guess, I guess, right? draw shorts. Okay, this one should be easy. Draw shorts. It's shorts. So in other words, simple drawings can communicate. So this is a good tool to test whether you can draw simple drawings that communicate, because it uses artificial intelligence to guess. So try it out, sailboat. Okay, the sailboat should know that. So I want you to try it out. I'll give you half a minute and see how you do, just for fun. I'll give a couple of <laughs> yeah. And then afterwards you can check, you can see here, you can check, because it uses pattern recognition to guess. So you can click on the hammer. This is what other people drew. You can see here, this is how you should draw a hammer for the artificial intelligence to recognize your drawing. You know? <laughs> and then the clock. So what do people draw? These are what people draw. It matches towards, this is what the artificial intelligence uses mostly in even languages, is pattern recognition, uh, visuals. Huh? So tree, my tree, look at that. This is uh, the tree. Ah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's really fun. So I want you now, I give you two minutes, you try the game and you tell me how many correct you got. Okay. You try doing the, okay, you try doing the quick draw. I'll put the link again in the chat box. I give you two minutes to have fun with the game. Okay. And I'm going to stop screen sharing, uh, Gota. Uh, and then I want you to, you don't need to share your results. Just share on the screen how many out of correct, I think there are eight drawings or six drawings, how many you got correct. Huh? It'll be quite interesting. <laughs> so try to play with it now for the next two minutes. And you can ask questions in the meme process. I'll just go back to sharing my slide. I put the link in the chat box, huh? the link to play the game. Uh, this is a very good tool to practice simple drawings. And because uh, in, 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 when you teach, you kind of usually you don't have time to draw complex stuff. So when you, you want to communicate your drawings, it should be as simple as possible. Uh, sometimes it's not possible if you're doing engineering and maths and anatomy, but sometimes it is possible. So the idea is actually to simplify as much as possible. Okay. So just play the game. I give you one or two minutes, but I'm here. If you have any questions, you can always ask in the, in the chat box. And if you finish the game, share with us how many correct you got. <laughs> uh, it's, it's done by Google again, another Google tool. Uh, it uses a neural network to learn to recognize your drawings. Okay. So Lufemi says, I just want to say it's awesome. Yeah, this is, um, uh, because actually when you teach, uh, your drawings do not need to be complicated. It can be very simple. And, and that's why people don't use, it. just a simple stick figure. Although today we're not gonna cover so much. Uh, Irene has given me a, a chance to give you another drawing workshop. 
which is on visual note taking, which will take place on the 8th of July. Uh, so there we'll go in more details, but today is more to understand the power. I want you to get so excited about drawing that you either do it or you bring your kids to do it or you bring your students to do it and you bring about it. Because this is one of the most important skills to have when you go into the world of innovation and inventions and ideas and so on. Uh, okay. So thank you much, Lucy. Uh, and I'm all about, okay. So while you're playing the game, uh, I'm going to show you this slide. And uh, not this one, this one. Okay. Okay. So today what we're going to talk about is a drawing for learning, teaching, and innovation. Okay. I'm trying to make sense of this. Okay. 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 So you see this drawing here. Let me just use the pointer. I like to use the pointer. I laser the pointer. Okay. So this is again, I like to draw all these drawings I've done by use, I use, I'll show you later, I use iPad Pro or iPad and a stylus, Apple Pencil. You don't, you don't have to use iPad or anything. You can use a normal tablet because the tool I use can use on multiple platforms, Microsoft, Google, and Apple products. Eh? Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is, first we're going to talk about learning, the power of drawing for learning. So learning, when I talk about drawing and learning, it's an extremely powerful tool to improve your uh, Yes, okay, I didn't, yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, for learning, drawing is an extremely powerful tool to improve people's focus. One of the biggest challenges today, especially with students, is they, they cannot focus unless they're interested. So you see students when they play games, they're so focused, but you ask them to study or you ask them to focus in class, unless they find you interesting or the subject interesting, they find it so difficult to focus because we are so used to instant gratification. We want everything to happen what we like now. So this is one of the biggest challenge to be a teacher today is to make whatever you're teaching interesting to the students. You might think it's interesting, but do the students think it's interesting? But what drawing does automatically encourage you to focus without you knowing. That's one of the people who say artists, they can draw for hours and hours, sometimes for 10 hours. They don't realize time has just flown away because they're so into it, okay? And then it, it's actually, I, te I used to study and I teach memory. If you want to remember anything, the best way to remember it is to draw it. That's one of the, I will come back to later. So it's, it's an extremely powerful to improve your memory. And then of course, drawing or visual thinking is the, is the method today to, to share ideas, to bring about innovation and so on. So if you teach, if we can teach our students to be able to draw, to visualize their imagination and their ideas and, and think through visuals, it can be extremely powerful. And the great thing that I can share with you is that we don't need any technology. This is one of the tools why I was so excited about it, is that it's scalable to anywhere. As long as a kid has a pencil, a pen, or a chalk, or a marker pen, and a piece of paper, or anything to write on, they can develop critical and creative thinking and so many other skills by just using those two tools. So you don't need to even have internet access or electricity. So that's one of the things I was so excited about drawing and I've been doing it for three years to e explore how this can be applied. So learning is an extremely powerful tool. And then for teaching, okay, this is we talked about. Teaching is an extremely powerful to connect with people or engage them, to simplify complexity. That one of the things that teachers always dream about is to create those. Do you have something complex to share with your students and then you can simplify it with a simple diagram or a simple circle combined with a square, you know? If you have that skill, uh, students are gonna be so excited, they're gonna learn things by you just showing simple visuals that simplify complex stuff. And then of course, if you do that, you will eventually inspire students. That's why drawing can be very inspiring as they just. And the last part is about inventors, innovation. If you study the history of innovation and innovation, which I have not done, but I've studied some of the great inventors, most of them never started building cars or building planes and they had an idea in their head and they started sketching it on a piece of paper or a note. And from there it built upon, it went through many stages, then it became what came. But at the starting point, even today's uh, entertainment, when you do, um, what do you call it, Walt Disney movies or Pixar movies, it all starts with storyboarding, simple sketching, simple lines and dots. And if we, if we don't expose our kids or students to this, they just use reuse images, we actually, we're not helping them uh, which is a, it's such an important skill for the future. Because once you can draw and you apply it in critical and creative thinking combined, it's an extremely powerful tool for any student to be successful in anything they do, because it will allow them to visualize their ideas and imagination. And it's also very fun. So these are the three things with innovation, okay? 
Okay. Uh, so we're going to talk about learning. Okay. So these are some of the things I actually tried to draw. Some of the things when I was doing research, what drawing can do for you. Okay. If you look at this drawing, it can clarify things. That's one of the things why I wondered why Leonardo da Vinci 500 years ago or plus now, 500 plus years ago, could have such ideas uh, out, of, out of nowhere. And then I realized what he used to do, I mean, from my understanding is he liked to paint, right? He was an artist. So when he started observing things in nature, he got ideas that triggered things, whether it was something flying object or it was uh, an animal. Or so, he, so this is the thing. Most in, inventions, innovations are triggered from observing the world. But when you observe the world and start drawing it, you start seeing details you did not see before. And that's one of the things I discovered myself. Uh, I started drawing at the age of, guess when I started drawing again? I mean, of course we draw as a kid. Guess when I started drawing again? I'm 46 now, okay? So if you wonder, I'm 46. Guess when I started drawing again? Thirty, twenty-one, fifteen. 21, <laughs> I started drawing at the age of 42. About nearly four years ago, I started drawing. Okay, so I started drawing again at the age of 42. The reason I started drawing was because I was start studying brain development. I was studying how people learn because I realized a lot of students, I worked in a medical university for seven years. I was seeing medical students studying ways that are not efficient, effective. So I did a lot of research and I helped quite a few students. But when I was doing my research, when I was studying about memory, I was studying about thinking skills. I was studying about uh, creativity and all came back to drawing. I, a lot of the great things, if you want to do great things in the society, is go back to drawing. Now I asked myself, I cannot draw anymore. I mean, I, I don't think I can draw. So I started again at the age of 42, okay? I, but the good thing is my mother is an artist. So I grew up in an artist world. So uh, I, 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 maybe, I, maybe another reason I was more confident because I, I, I've been exposed to artists uh, since I was young. But I stopped drawing at the age of 12 when I started playing football. And you know, in, when in, in those days, when you play football, you cannot draw. I mean, football and drawing <laughs> doesn't go very well together. But so don't be discouraged. Even if you're 50, 60, because here we're talking about, when you talk about drawing, we're not talking about creating artwork. You know, we're talking about uh, using it for, for purposes, whether it's to, you have an idea in your head, you want to put it, you cannot put words into it, you just want to put it, scribble it, or you want to teach something, or you want to learn something. Uh, so that's where the power is, visual, visual communication, as Kate Fortune said, okay? And as Pablo Picasso said, everyone is born an artist, uh, appreciate I said, huh? Okay. So you can see some of the things in this drawing I tried to put. So in other words, it will improve you in terms of storytelling, in thinking, memory, taking notes. We'll talk about bit notes. Empathy. Uh, one of the powers of drawing is improves your, can, can improve it. Not doesn't necessarily improve, but it can improve your empathy. Especially when you start drawing things. Like if you start drawing animals, you start drawing nature, you start drawing scenarios, you start getting more feelings for the things. Huh? Uh, and also for teachers, it's a very powerful tool to illustrate and share. And ideas, if you have ideas, not, most new ideas, you cannot put words to it because there's no word to it. So you must be able to find ways to visualize it. And drawing is a very easy way to start sketching. Because if you only can use technology, a lot of people say, I just use Photoshop, Illustrator. But sometimes you have an idea in the middle of the night. Well, you're going to switch on your computer and get everything ready and then start drawing. By the time you do that, the idea is gone or the idea is like, so when the idea is there, sometimes you just want to pick up a piece of paper and scribble it. Aha, uh -huh, that's it. Uh -huh. Okay. And then, so these are some of the things that drawing can do for you. That's why I always tell, don't think about becoming an artist because that's 1% or maybe less of the population. But if you think about drawing as a tool to improve your learning, teaching, innovation, uh, content development, then it's relevant to all of us, especially in this room, which we're all educators. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So there's something called the drawing effect. There's some research here. I will share the slides, most of the slides with you later. Uh, there's something called the drawing effect. They've done some research and they found that when you want to learn a, a word or a concept, it, it's good to draw it. And it, because when you draw, you're activating, uh, as you know, they say the whole brain, but actually there's two, your hand, your hand is one of the most connected tools that you, I mean, body parts you have is one of the most connected body parts. It's actually, I'm not sure whether it's the most connected body part to your brain. 
The hands is exceptional. That's why we build, most of the things we build with our hands. So one of the things when you're learning, if you're learning and sitting in a classroom just learning, it's much more effective when you're taking notes because you act, when you use your hands, not just your fingers, but when you use your index finger and thumb, those two, uh, th those two here are so interconnected to the brain. So when you're using them, actually a lot of brain is like energized, the neurons and neural activity is energized by just activating these two, the thumb and the index finger. So that's very important in terms of even memory because when more of your brain is activated, more senses you use, the more memorable it is, okay? Okay. Okay, and so in other words, they found it better than, uh, let's just move this, writing words, it, they found it better than uh, mental imagery, if you practice, and picture superiority. Pic picture superiority, <laughs> I always have a problem with this word. Superiority is that you look at a picture and you remember it, okay? So they found it better, but actually the best is to, to write out and draw out if you can, but not everything can be drawn out, but if it can be drawn out, like for example, one of the, the subjects, I worked in a medical university for uh, seven years. Most students struggle, today's students struggle with anatomy. But actually anatomy is one of the easiest subject if you start drawing out the body parts while remembering it. Uh, in simple, it doesn't have to be perfect drawings, but you're drawing it. The act of drawing, the process of drawing, and, and it, it's, it's reinforcing the memory and you're using more of the brain and it's, it, it becomes a, 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 a stronger memory. So that's why it's very important to teach students that are learning anatomy, anything that is visual, to, to actually draw it out. It becomes much more memorable. And the good thing about it is if you can draw body parts, you can easily become a medical teacher also later. And even if you're a doctor, you still need to draw to your patients sometimes. Okay. So these are some of the very interesting things I discovered. Okay. And this is interesting. If you're a Muslim, it's not so interesting maybe, but if you're, I mean, if you're not a Muslim, Okay, so this drawing I did here is based on, I want to ask you, uh, if you maybe you notice students that take notes in class, uh, they usually are more alert than students that don't take notes. You often see, sometimes you see a lot of students, they're not taking notes and they're falling asleep in class. Have you seen that? <laughs> Have you seen students falling asleep in class before? Or maybe you're so good teacher that they don't fall asleep. <laughs> but one of the reason is not, See, the thing is, if you just listen, uh, very little of your brain is actually activated, okay? So that's why I always tell students, when I train students, that even if you don't want to take notes, doodle. And you listen, you doodle. Because when, if you don't activate your hands, your hands is very important in the learning process. If you don't activate your hands, much of your brain is, is, is falling asleep, basically. So you need to activate. And interesting, I've, I've asked hundreds of students, maybe up to a thousand now, do you prefer taking notes with a computer? or you prefer taking notes with hand? What do you prefer? And students today, they, they type much faster than they can write. Maybe you can type 40 words per minute and maybe write 10, 20 words per minute, but they still, most still prefer taking notes by hand. I don't know if you noticed that. You can ask your students, very interesting. And actually by research, they've proven that people remember more of what they write than what they type. And that goes back to the, as I talked about, when you type, you're using all 10 fingers, which is okay. But when you write, you're using usually the index finger and the index finger and the thumb. These two fingers are very critical because they are very connected to the brain. So this could be one of the reasons why it's more memorable to take notes while writing because of the movement and also because of the using these two fingers, which are very central in the process. Okay. Uh, so Catherine must be doodling. This is it. <laughs> so actually, I mentioned I was talking about this. You can see this drawing here. Different. You can see the brain is activated not so much by just listening. But I actually talked to some um, Muslim scholars, and then he he referred to an ayat from the holy book of the Quran, and he said he mentioned actually this is very interesting. He he referred to an ayat. He said now I understand the ayat, and it says, uh, which which says actually that you learn with the hand. So when you're learning, you have to act, use the hand a lot. The hand is important. So this is very interesting that you already said in the whole book, when you learn, you must use the hand. If you're not using the hand, you, it's going to impact the learning process in, in other words. So the hand is very central in the learning process. And that's unfortunate today. We see a lot of students because the lectures have the slides, they print out, they just sit there, they just lie down and hope everything is going to go into their head. And it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Yeah? And maybe they can listen for a certain while, but when you use your hands, your brain is much more activated. And if you can draw and visualize and think it's much more powerful. Okay, so until now, do you have any questions now? 
because so I've been talking now, I think, for about 10 minutes. So you have any questions before I move forward and of what I've talked about? I'm going to take a bit more. Okay. Okay. So this is, um, okay. It still works thought reading. It still works thought reading, writing hand versus typing in computer. Yeah. I, you can type. I think the beauty of typing is that you get your notes concentrated. But I always tell people taking notes multiple times is actually not a waste of time. I mean, taking detailed notes, detailed notes multiple times is, not, is a waste of time. But taking, writing the key concepts again and again for to, to remember is, is actually a very powerful tool. So don't see it as a waste of time taking notes. So this is something I'm going to cover in my next uh, webinar with you guys if you come again. Uh, it's called The Power of Visual Note Taking. So I'll teach you about visual note taking per se, but today is more about drawing and the whole perspective. Because visual note taking is extremely powerful. It's extremely powerful to learn as a teacher to share. And as if you're a problem solver, you can draw out things. Okay. Okay. So that, that's the power of visual note. I'll show you some of my visual notes. This is, I used to do handwritten visual notes. But when you take visual notes, you don't have to share it to anyone. So don't be obsessed whether it's nice or not. If you want to share it with other people, it should be nice. But if, if you're just for yourself, it's all about visualizing the words, the key concept, and making it memorable for you and structuring it. And so it's really about the notes are really for you unless you want to share it to others. Okay. Okay. So this is my, some of the vision notes. This is a, 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 I attended a, a very nice talk by Prof. Mushtaq. He talked about employability in the 21st century. See, when I've taken the visual notes, I could spend one, half an hour talking about this talk. It comes back to me because of the, the visualization and the key concept. But actually what I liked about his talk, uh, this was done, I think, uh, 2018, two years ago. He talked about three things that universities should do and what Harriet Watt University, which is a uh, Scottish university, campus in Malaysia. He said academic excellence. All universities does that. I mean, you want to have academic excellence. But he also emphasized in this era, that you need to develop emotional intelligence. So they have put it strategically in the curriculum that students develop emotional intelligence. And they do that through a lot of, you can see a lot of projects. And thirdly, he also doesn't want just emotional intelligence. He wants the students to be happy. So he has his theories and he has a lot of uh, activities. They set up a lot of projects to help students to be happy. And to be happy, we're talking about uh, developing gratitude, helping other, when you help other people, uh, it's not just about helping yourself, it's about helping other people. When you help other people, you feel better. So they have a lot of projects that there's a lot of activities. Uh, showing gratitude to your mom, showing gratitude to your parents, to people around you, your teachers. And, and then they have going, doing good things to the poor communities and all that. So all that brings about happiness, emotional intelligence, besides doing the academic excellence. So this is what uh, Prof. Mushtaq did. And I tried to draw it out because I was very impressed in his talk. And when I did this drawing, it's not I draw everything while he was talking. That's not my style. I'm not a professional, what you call a graphic recorder. I will take down notes, scribble, scribble notes. And then when I go back, I will draw out uh, his ideas and thoughts. And the good thing is when I've drawn out that, it has become a visual memory for me. Even if I don't even see this drawing, it's in my head. So I can actually give a talk about what he said. Of course, not to his level, but I can talk about to students maybe for 10, 15 minutes, what he said, which is very exciting. Okay. So this is just one example of vision notes. This is another vision note, which I do I, when I used to teach memory. I had a workshop called Super Memory, Super Memory, uh, Super MRT. So basically I teach Super Memory, so I focus on focus. Most students, the reason they cannot remember and read well and think well is because they don't know how to focus. So that's what I usually do. I'll teach them how to focus, and then I teach them memory techniques, reading techniques, speed reading, smart reading, and then how to use thinking tools for the future, whether it's design thinking or uh, scamper, all these things. So this is another visual note on, uh, it's a bit different from mind maps. Mind maps is good also, but mind maps is more for organization information and, and making things structured. But if you want to remember for long term, I, I've used mind maps for three years and get on, got very good grades, A's and so on. But I found mind maps not so powerful for long, long term memory. I found visual note taking extremely powerful for long term memory, which you want students to have. So this is another drawing I did on industry one, two, three, four, five. I'm not going to go through it, but I will share with these drawings later. So these are just some of visual notes that I take. So I like to, I was a period every week, the most interesting thing I learned, I will draw a visual notes of it. 
uh, and uh, people benefit from it. And also, I, of course, have it long term. This is how to do exercise. Uh, if you want to do exercise for happy, happiness hormones, you have different exercises, coordination, burst power, strength, and so on. <laughs> I'm just showing you now, because it's not a lecture about, the, I'm just showing examples of visual notes, okay? This is on uh, digital trends, gamification, blended learning, flipped learning, augmented reality, virtual reality, MOOCs, so everything in one drawing. So I have captured the key uh, trends in, in uh, and this is disruptive technology. So the Internet of Things, this is one of the most disruptive technologies going to happen and is already happening, is the toilet, okay? Uh, the toilet is very powerful. In the future, you, you go to the toilet, it analyzes you. <laughs> so once you come out, you know, you know all the details. Are you feeling well? You got COVID? Or what? I'm not saying COVID, but it will tell you everything about your health because everything is in your both thing. I don't want to talk about that coming out. But there's a lot of disruptive texts coming out, about, okay? Uh, so these are just some of the visual notes, okay? So, and this is, this visual note here, I have, I'll show you, I have a lecture I gave 20 minutes. I can just, by looking at this, I can talk about 20 minutes about the most powerful techniques to improve your active learning skills. Huh? From, because one of the things people don't do, they don't prepare before class uh, and they're not really focused during class and they don't do revision after. But if you do these three things, you can keep things in long-term memory. So this is another example of visual notes. Okay. And this is another about computational thinking. Uh, the, okay, how many of you heard of computational thinking? Can you say in the chat yes or no? Have you heard about computational thinking or not? How many? No, yes, no, no. Okay, Lucy says no. Jaisu, Jaisu Bash said no. Cat Fortune, yes. Okay. So what can we say about computational thinking? Is, is that something you're teaching in your university now? Is, is that a requirement to learn computational thinking? <laughs> it's one of the most important skills to learn today in the era of robotics and automation and, and <laughs> okay so this was what I learned about this this was in 2018 or 2017 computational thinking is actually a, a, a form of thinking that helps you uh, to, to actually become to, to prepare to help the the robots augment, uh, what call it, uh, artificial intelligence. On, see, when you when you develop computational thinking, it starts with the first part. Uh, let me just show you by step by step. Huh? The first step is decomposition. So you have to learn how to analyze. Decomposition is another word for analyze. So this skill to, to analyze is 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 quite challenging today because if they don't learn how to do, because today we don't analyze that much because we we have got Google. You know, every time you want to solve a problem, the first many people they do is they Google. Even they have an answer for a problem, they, they Google. If Google can't answer, then I start thinking. Uh, so, but this ability to analyze is very important. So the first thing to say when you have a complex problem, because today they have a lot of, say, let's choose a problem. Okay, let's do uh, COVID, COVID or Corona. Okay, this, that's a very complex problem, right? So analyze. So say, say that we focus on Brazil. Today, Brazil is, is very bad hit by uh, so analyze why why is Brazil hit more, for example, than say Malaysia? Why? Uh, so you analyze the analyze situation. And the next thing is you start seeing patterns. Why is it? Uh, what are the patterns that you see that Corona spreads? Uh, so in all the ones was social distancing, right? That's a pattern. If if there's no social distancing, that's a pattern. That if it's no social, distancing, the more Corona. So you start identifying patterns. This is a skill, pattern recognition. This is another skill that students need to develop to see patterns. Because when you're doing complex things, so the first one is analyze, pattern recognition, you see patterns. And then it is abstraction. You start simplifying the problems. You're simplifying, so you're visualizing, simplifying it. And the last part, which is, was not part of the past, but is very much part of the present and future, is coming out with algorithms, rules. Algorithms is rules. So this skill to come up with algorithms is critical because this is a skill that you want to develop because uh, for, for robots, artificial intelligence, automation to work, they need to be fed rules, algorithms. So this skill, this, this is just the whole process of in, in simplified mode, computational thinking. This whole process is a skill that we need to empower even on students down to 10, 11 years old, simplify. They must develop this skill to do this uh, and, and let them get challenges, very complex challenges, whether it's corona or global warming or fires or storms or hurricanes, wars, you know, expose them. The idea here is, is that they, they, they try to solve complex problems. It's not about the result. It's about the process of going through it. 
dealing with complex problems, breaking it down, finding patterns, uh, simplifying it, and then breaking into rules, and then coming suggestions how we can simplify the understanding, simple things like face recognition. So computational thinking is actually one of the most important skills to learn. Uh, and, and you can see here, when you do computational thinking, you're doing complex problem solving, you're doing critical thinking, you're doing creativity, you're doing judgment and decision making, you're doing cognitive flexibility. So all these skills needs to be developed in today's students, whether they're university students, even if you ask me, down to the age of 11, 10, they can already start being exposed to this. Because these skills are more important. You can see this is in most, this is, we, were, we are already in 2020, okay? But these all, you notice most of the skills that the, the corporate or the, the working world want is thinking skills, the ability and communication skills, collaboration skills, leadership skills. It's not so much the content itself. And I think that is where education is gonna change most is that we were, in the past, we were so focused that in the exams and the results, but today it's not about that. We want them to have the skills. We want them to have the ability to communicate, the ability to have empathy, the ability to, to be a caring citizen. Now today, if you're not a caring citizen and you're very smart, you can create bad things. So all these skills, character building. So these are becoming more central today. And this is where uh, computational thinking comes place. I'm sharing things beyond drawing, but this is just some of my visual notes as which I like to take, okay? Okay. And I talk about pattern recognition. I'm gonna show you a drawing here, I did. I wanted to show you when I teach drawing, if you, let me just start again. Huh? If you learn pattern recognition uh, while drawing using, you can start, I, I, I start, studied Walt Disney cartoons by myself and I started seeing patterns because I, what I like about Walt Disney cartoons is not the story, is how they're drawn. So simple drawings that can reach out to so many people which is really amazing. Just look at, I'm gonna draw three characters starting with the same pattern. Huh? Just look at this, very interesting. I'm drawing three different characters. You can probably guess who I'm drawing. Eh? Can you guess who I'm drawing? <laughs> I started with a circle and a line, huh? but I can draw three different drawings at the same time. Sometimes I do it live on a whiteboard just to show how powerful. Uh, and you can teach kids this. I tell you, you can teach kids to draw like this at the age of seven, eight years old. And by the time they're 15, 16, uh, they can, if, whether they want to draw in entertainment or they want to become an architect or they want to become, a, a, what do you call it? They want to become an engineer or they want to become even a doctor. They have the skills already. I don't know. Okay, let me just finish the drawing. Eh? Okay, so you can see it. Uh, so this is the drawing. Okay, so these three characters have the same nose, basically, and the same upper part here. Uh, uh, so this is one of the things I, I like to train people. And I'm amazed when I do some of these workshops, I'll show you pictures. They can draw without me teaching them anything, but just using a bit of critical thinking, analytical thinking, computational thinking, okay? So this is Prof Ramesh. Uh, I think some of, if some of the Indian participants, they know Prof Ramesh. He, was, he used to draw as a kid, he stopped drawing, but I got him to draw. I, I don't know, he was influenced by me to draw again after 20 years or 30 years. He started drawing again, very good. Uh, this is my first workshop I did in two years, uh, three years ago, I think it's about three years, two and a half years ago. Uh, you can see here, uh, this is uh, all these kids. This is how uh, you can see how, but in this workshop, I uh, exposed them to drawing for empathy, learning, innovation, growth mindset, health and teaching. And it was amazing. I didn't teach them much drawing, but the things they came up with was uh, pretty impressive. Even a cat joined us. Uh, so these, these girls here, uh, they draw this, they, so the future teacher is a robot. <laughs> I asked them to draw the future of education and they, the kids came up with so many creative ideas, but this is one of the drawings. Yeah? This is, I got professors to draw. So what I use is, uh, you can use also margin paper and I asked them to draw the future of education again. I like them to draw the future, but I gave them a bit challenges. You can see professors drawing here, working hard. And these are some of their drawings. This is from University of Malaya, which is ranked the number one university in Malaysia, by the way now. Huh? Uh, you can see here some of the ideas. This is my cousin presenting. We can see this one is really impressive. The future of education in the Kaizen and so on. Uh, this is from Taylor's University in Malaysia again. You can see here. The, one thing I like about drawing, when you have drawing as a tool to share ideas, huh, when they present, it becomes so lively and fun. And one of the tricks about creative thinking is if you want people to be creative, they need to be relaxed and have fun. And if you cannot do that, most likely the ideas will not be so great. Uh, I went to Turkey. It's a school called Unique. I'm helping a bit. I helped that a bit. And I got, first I got the, the teachers and the parents to draw. 
And then I got the kids to draw, and that was really amazing. Uh, it was, they were from all of the, were mostly from Middle East students in Turkey, but they, they were very active, and, and you can see there. I gamified the workshop. You see them having, getting chocolate and having fun. Uh, this is from university, Islamic University, my, where I graduated from. I got the teachers to draw, you can see here. Uh, this is from Herit Watt University. I got them to actually, they had a challenge. They had a, a project. So they had Empower, which is a strategy that, I can't remember what it was about, but they came up with drawings to illustrate how to make it happen. Uh, you can see here. But look at the way they, when they present. Huh? Usually when people present the ideas in a group discussion, I mean, when they have a innovation workshop, people are very stressed to present to the people. But you can see here when they're presenting, <laughs> having a lot of fun presenting their unique ideas. Huh? <laughs> okay, and then 2019, I went to Singapore. Uh, this is Al Sagov School. It actually is an Al Sagov School in Singapore. I'm also Al Sagov, so I share with them. Uh, it was very interesting. But when I, after that, I realized I I had already started digital drawing, but I had not taught people digital drawing. So I started exposing to digital drawing. So I went to Penang, USM, University of Science Malaysia in Penang in Malaysia, and taught them digital drawing. This is when I started in 2019 to teach children. So here are teachers, you can see, they are drawing their content here. You can see here, they're actually drawing their content. So I teach them how to draw using different devices, okay? And this is, again, you know, it's not digital drawing. You can see it's, these are some of the things that they draw. This is another workshop I did to people that uh, write books. They draw uh, children books. What they used to do is conventional, but they started doing after this digital drawing for their children books. Okay, you can see that. And this is for the society for the deaf. Even the deaf also, we had a very nice workshop teaching uh, how you can use drawing for the deaf, uh, which is very powerful, of course. And this is just a normal public workshop. So these are just some drawings. And I always like to get students to draw and present, not just draw, they present the idea. Because at the end of the day, as I said, it's not the drawing that matters, it's the thinking process behind the drawing and them sharing the idea. And the, the, the drawing is just to communicate their idea. So don't get, a lot of teachers get hanged out or oh, the drawing is nice. It's not important to me. More is important is the idea behind the drawing. Sometimes the drawing is nice, but the idea is very plain. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So this is uh, some of the workshops and this is my, uh, she passed away last week, but uh, Alhamdulillah now she is in peace, but She's 98, she still, draw, she still drew at the age of 97. And even 98, she still liked to draw. Uh, and that kept her mind clear, okay? Okay, so that is for learning. Uh, so do you have any questions in terms of, uh, have you got some ideas on how you can use drawing now for your teaching and learning after listening to me for 20 minutes? I'm gonna take a one minute, two minute break while you can share some of your questions or some of your thoughts now in the chat box of maybe how, how, how are you thinking now, based on what I've said, how do you can use drawing for your teaching and learning? Okay, Lucy says we can keep uh, drawing, uh, keep the participants engaged. Can we say that more one draws, the more effective they're teaching? Uh, Gabriel, not necessarily. Uh, that's one of, it depends if the, drawing, if the drawing communicates what you want to learn, maybe, yes, it should be. And it, it really depends. I can't, that's a very tricky question. But of course, as you draw, you hopefully can visualize better. Kola uh, Wole Aramid, okay. Interesting, it's a good idea, but requirements, uh, uh, what's it called? Requires deep, uh, deep thinking. Uh, okay, Prashila will say, use drawing to generate ideas. Uh, Sanjeev says, needed maths. Yes, I have a link afterwards on how they're using drawing in maths, okay? Uh, I think you should draw now. Okay, use drawing to bring out difficult conversation, okay? Okay. 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 So we got that here, and then we have Irene says, uh, use drawing to bring out the difficult conversations. Good, sensitive conversations sometimes can draw out. It needs a lot of coordination with all the senses. Okay, Sophia, uh, Mutala. Uh, Mutala, are you here, mashallah? How can you improve drawing using system thinking? Uh, okay, we're going to system thinking. Uh, 
Uh, I'll get back to you on that later on system thinking. Eh? Okay, uh, let me just share the, I'm just going to share with you the link to the, uh, the link here, this one. Okay, if you want to join this group. Okay, uh, okay. Okay, I'm not done yet. People are saying, this is actually a two-hour session. <laughs> Thank you very much, I'm done. <laughs> okay, but I'm going to go into tools now. Okay, I'm going to go into technology. The first hour is about sharing. I'm just going to cover another five minutes on teaching and innovation, and we're going to go into tools, okay? Uh, so this is just the part. Now I want to share with teaching, because that's what you do. Most of you are educators. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so... Okay, teaching, okay, I'm gonna skip this. Okay, this is an example of one teacher, you can see here, very nice, this teacher, uh, what, what he, uh, or she does, uh, she, every morning, she will come early to class, she's just using a whiteboard and a marker pen, and she will draw something, and then she'll ask students a question, and they come on the whiteboard and answer the question. So they say, how would you survive a zombie ap ap apocalypse? <laughs> They'll ask her how to survive. Okay, so her drawings are very nice, but I'm not saying her drawings have to be nice, but this is just an example of how she has used drawing. And what she does, she only comes five to 20 minutes before the class and draws it and engages the students to come up to class and share their ideas. But that drawing itself can create that bit more excitement the, to the engage uh, the process. Uh, this guy here, Chuan Bin Chong, but he, he, uh, he draws, this is really <laughs> tough. He draws actually the human, actually he's using visual notes to help him, but he draws the anatomy. But what I like about it, he also asks students to draw. And this is one of the most important things. If you want to become a doctor, uh, you have to learn how to draw the body parts also. Because then your internal memory will become very powerful. The act of drawing out the, the body parts, it doesn't have to be perfect in the beginning, but that will help you to, to really remember and, and practice. And then when you become a doctor, you can practice it by when you want to show patients they have an injury, and you don't have to depend on all this technology. You can just take a pen and paper and say, this is your problem, the knee here. And you just sketch out simple drawings of different body parts. Okay, so this is very powerful. This is very important. Uh, this is Dr. Najib Lectures. Uh, the world's, the, he calls himself, I mean, the world's most popular medical lectures. He's amazing. Uh, I will share the links after, or when I have a break, I'll share the links. What he does, this is what you can do also. If, if you're not used to modern technology, but you use the whiteboard, he just puts basically, or gets someone to put a camera in front of the whiteboard, and he talks for one or half an hour, one hour, two hours, and he illustrates, uh, and he uses, see, he uses different color pens here. He uses green, blue, black, red, and he just draws on a whiteboard. His drawings are amazing, but you don't have to be amazing. You just have to be simplifying and communicating. So this is one of the cheapest way. If you can draw, you, you solve the copyright issue, right? You're creating your own content, and you can illustrate. This is the cheapest way, and sometimes even the best way to create e-learning content, online content. You put the camera in front of the whiteboard, you make sure you have good audio, and then you talk about what you want to strip. Because uh, I, I found by the, some of the best teachers, what they do is when you connect the expert and the content with the magic wand, <laughs> it's really powerful. Okay. So this is uh, Dr. Najib Lectures. You can see, uh, I'll share the link after this. So if somebody can help me share the links, uh, Najib Lectures. Uh, some of the Indian uh, participants will definitely know who <laughs> Dr. Najib is. Amazing guy. Okay. Uh, so Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. <laughs> Okay, so okay, we're gonna skip this. These are some, uh, I, when I teach drawing, these are just some examples. Simple drawings like steep learning curve. You can see I'm drawing the steep learning curve, okay? Just using two, if you use a red and black marker pen, you can draw simple things. If you have a pen now, you can try to draw a steep learning curve. If you don't have two colors, it's okay. These are just some examples just to illustrate that when you want to illustrate something like the steep learning curve, you can, a simple drawing can make a better illustration uh, of, for example, the steep learning curve. Okay. And this is how to draw the brain, simple way to draw the brain. This is not for medical, this is more if you want to draw the brain, if you're teaching all things, just illustrate the simple <laughs> version of the brain. Because if you're a medical illustrator, you won't have probably more complex uh, drawing of the brain. So it will come out like this, the two different ways to draw the brain. Okay. So in other words, uh, for a teacher, a drawing is very powerful to engage. We talk, I think somebody mentioned in the chat box to jump. And it, it's a very powerful to, to simplify things for the people. 
and it's an extreme powerful if you want to inspire people. One of the things I noticed, a lot of motivation speakers, they just use a market pen uh, and, a, and a whiteboard sometimes when they want to illustrate key concepts to, to engage the audience. Huh? Okay. So, uh, can anybody guess who did this drawing or not? Can anybody guess who did this drawing? Jashpur says Einstein. No, this is not Einstein. Another one, Lucy says Einstein. This is one of the most famous drawings in history. Uh, not in art, but in terms of uh, science and inventions and innovations and so on. Okay, Francisco knows. Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. <laughs> Leonardo drew, drew this, his version of a helicopter 500 plus years ago. Yeah, Muhammad Ahmad. Leonardo da Vinci drew this. So you, this is the things we want kids to do. They have ideas, they draw simple drawings, and then they talk about their drawings, you know. Simple things like this. If you look at patents, even most patents, this is what they do. Simple drawings and then explaining what they are. This skill we can teach already in kids. Okay. Okay, I'll see this. What is this? Can anybody guess what this is? This is a bit more fun. <laughs> can you guess what this is? Anybody? A rabbit. <laughs> Francis says rabbit. Sophia says a bird. What else? A duck. Jaiso, Jaiso says a duck. Rabbit. Rabbit. Anything else or not? <laughs> a little familiar duck. Okay. So most people will see a duck in a rabbit. That's what it is. But it also could be something else. If you open your imagination, it's just a, if you notice, it's just a lines and a circle. So it could even be a lake with a, with a little, uh, you know. Okay. Try this one. This one is more challenging. Can you guess what this is or not? Hasana is here, okay, Hasana. Muntala like the rabbit. Huh? So what is this? This one is a bit more challenging. <laughs> if you're a medical doctor, you would know what this is. You should know what this is. If you're not a medical doctor, you probably struggle a bit with this. Bone structure. Sophia says, uh, uh, Irene says joint. Ufelin says housefly. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, no, it's none of that. But it could be. It's your imagination. Uh, but actually, it's, I did when I drew it. I just, Joyce says elephant, human body. Okay, <laughs> dancing girl. <laughs> you want me to reveal what it what it, when I drew it? Cow's face. <laughs> A cow's face. Okay, good imagination. <laughs> Two people. Okay, ovary. Okay, Francisco says ovary. That's one close. But actually, when I drew it, it's actually based on the brain. This is actually the amygdala, and this is the hypothalamus. And this is, you know, so this is actually inside of the brain. The brain, yeah, the brain. <laughs> inside of the brain. So this is what your brain looks like while you're talking to me now. If you go deep inside your brain, this is part of your brain. <laughs> okay. But I, I think it's important to understand is, uh, one of the things you have to understand about ideas, and this is very important for students, is, Great ideas don't come in a flash usually. It, it goes, people, when they see movies, they have, oh, I have this great idea. Actually, it goes over years and years. Sometimes great ideas take years, years to process. They're thinking about it, putting. But what we want to train, if you ask me, what we should be training students is if you have an idea, try to visualize it, sketch it, and then look at it, and then go back, think about it, get feedback, share it, and then draw it again. And iterate it, iteration, iteration, iteration. And maybe after many, it becomes a brilliant idea. Maybe it was a brilliant idea in the beginning, but it needed, it's just like a rough diamond. It's just a stone, a rough diamond, but then you start touching it up, fixing up, and then it becomes a great idea. Uh, even if you look, just, I just want to share an example. Uh, how many of you watch Toy Story, Toy Story 4, Pixar movie? Anybody watch Toy Story here? You can say yes or no in the chat box. Have you seen Toy Story? Or oh, any, I'm sure you watch Toy Story, yes, right? Uh, when you watch these movies, uh, you get, I mean, sometimes you just get, so how do they do? How can they come up with these storylines? How can they get, make it so interesting overall? And uh, so most movies, they, actually all animation movies, they go through uh, storylines, you know, they, they do a storyboarding. They call it storyboarding. So usually one of the tricks is 
the great story doesn't come out straight away. They know the ending. They, they probably know the ending. They know the beginning. So they wrote, they, they sketch a quick story. This is a story with, with the one scene from the story. And then they share it to a focus group. And they look at it. They give feedback. And it goes through many cycles. Usually, because the, they know already the first story is not going to be so interesting. But when they test it with the audience again and again, they keep on iterating. So that's one of the reasons why it's very important to tell, uh, teach kids how to use low tech. And, and drawing is one of the low tech skills is that most great things, like even great movies from Walt Disney and so on, they start with simple drawings because it costs too much to start animating straight away. So they clear up the story. So some of these scenes in the, in the movies that you see Toy Story go through hundreds and hundreds of times. It goes through cycles, checking with who, and so on until they're happy with it. But the thing is, it needs to go through that process to get the great story. And that's one of the challenges with movies. It that's why some movies takes one or two years. Sometimes the first half year, they're not even doing any animation. They're creating the good story. Goes through many sessions. That's why ideas usually needs to go through many iterations. And I tried to illustrate that in this drawing. Okay. Okay. And the, the power of, when you talk about art and science, drawing, if you infuse drawing is part of your skill, student skill. The, the way I'm talking about drawing is that you will develop critical thinking, creative thinking, inventive thinking, innovative thinking, collaborative thinking, and computational thinking. These are things that you will develop if you apply drawing in a creative way. Huh? Okay, and of course in STEM, you can infuse art becomes part of STEM and drawing is one of them. Huh? Okay, uh, okay, I'll skip this. Okay, so I've been talking a lot. I hope I've got you excited about drawing. I spent about nearly more than one hour on learning, teaching, and innovation. So now we're gonna talk about the basics of drawing. So I'm gonna get you to draw soon. So I hope you have your piece of paper here. Because <laughs> this, I think the most fun is to get you excited. Okay, that's good. So now we can start, okay. So when I uh, talk about drawing, there are three ways we can use in school or, or universities. One is just use pencil or pen and paper. I want to ask you, why would it be better to start with a pen than a pencil? Why would you draw first with a pen instead of a pencil? Can anybody try to guess what I'm trying to think here? Why do I encourage people to use pen instead of pencil? Aha, uh -huh, appreciate that. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, Gabriel said, okay, you're raising your hand. Okay. Okay, yes, Gabriel, to what do you want to say? To gain okay. confidence, I think. Okay, gain confidence, okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Gabriel, nice. To be more careful. See, one of the challenges when you, when you, especially adults, okay, children, not so bad. Adults, you give them a pencil and they have an eraser, what happens? <laughs> they end up not drawing anything. They draw, erase, draw, erase, draw. No, what I say is to build confidence, as, as Gabriel said, you need to draw. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. You just finish the drawing. And simple drawing, finish it, finish it. So with a pen, it forces you to finish or do something. Because with a pencil, it, it kind of stops you because you have the raise, the raise, and then you never build confidence, as, as Gabriel said, okay? So it's very important, huh? It's a good idea to start with a pen to scribble. Of course, you're gonna waste paper, hopefully if you have a digital device, but pen is a good start. I never use, I don't use pencil at all. When I started drawing again at age 40, I just skip pencil. Because I want to build the confidence. It doesn't matter if I do a mistake, either I finish the drawing or I start again. But ideas, it, it builds that focus. Because one thing when you draw with the pen, huh, it, it builds the focus. I'm not saying you should not use pencil. Because when you do complex drawings, you need to use pencil. But just to start drawing is a good idea. Just use the pen. Because you will finish something. <laughs> if you have a pencil, you might never finish. But with a pen, you've got, if you keep on drawing, you have to either change the paper or you're going to finish something, whether it's good or bad. So pencil is good. Huh? And then use marker pens. Of course, teachers need to teach how to use marker pens. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to talk about digital drawing. If you, if you can afford it or you have it, you have, I have this one, you can see in the, cam in the video, you see this? This is what you call a vacuum board. Uh, this is something, okay, it's the wrong way. So this is what I, I can use to draw. Uh, so I have, so if, even if you don't have a tablet, you can actually, you can actually, what do you call it? You can just draw using this and it will display on the screen. And, and this is, uh, and now it's, it's not so expensive, uh, the cheap, this is the cheapest one you can get. It's about 25 US dollars, I think. Uh, I'm not sure your, your, cause there's so many people from different countries here. So I'll just use US dollars. Uh, it's about 20, 25 dollars you can buy a cheap one. And that's good enough for starters, okay? 
it's not a smart board. It's just a, uh, it's a, it's, this one's called a vacuum board, but it's just a board. This is what, if you know Khan Academy, Salman Khan started with this. Simple like this. Now it's more complex, but he, had, he started with this. This is what he was, Khan Academy was based on using this simple tool like this. You can buy online. If you cannot buy in your country, you can buy online. Uh, this is uh, so many places. And then what I use, uh, all my drawings, unfortunately, more of my drawings, I use, this is more expensive. I use a tablet. I bought the quite expensive one. This is a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Let me just, just okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. You can see here. Uh, uh, let me just put the tool. Huh? I can see here. Uh, let me just see. Okay. You can see here, this is my last drawing. Uh, uh, somebody, Bruce Lee kind of guy fighting the corona. <laughs> anyway, so I, here I use iPad and I use stylus. Uh, this is my favorite. I've been using it two and a half years. So I also teach people, I will show you how this works. But you don't have to use, Apple is very expensive. Although I use Apple, I tell you iPad is very expensive. Uh, like this one here, now maybe three, I, I, spot, I spend well, more than 1,000 US on this. But you don't have to use an uh, Apple you can also use uh, other tablets because the tool I'm going to share with you works on Microsoft Surface or anything, okay? But I use Apple iPad Pro and Apple Pencil, which is a stylus, but you don't have to use that. But this is what I use. I just want to share what I use. Uh, you can also draw on your phone. Uh, most drawing tools can also run on a phone. Uh, and if you can use your finger, you can use a stylus, okay? But don't worry about tools, because as I said, the beauty of drawing is, if you don't have anything, as long as you have a pencil or a pen and a piece of paper, you can teach your students critical thinking, creative thinking, collaborative thinking, computational thinking, all that can be done if you use drawing strategically. So that's the good thing. That's why I'm very excited about drawing, because this is scalable to any, any educational institution. But of course, it's how you apply drawing. If you just tell students to draw anything, you might not get good results. But if you strategically teach students how to think while they draw, uh, you can teach them amazing skills, whether it's in the jungles or whether it's in the cities or when they're poor areas, anywhere. And that's why I'm so excited. But that's one of the reasons I left technology for two, three years and explore this, the power of drawing. Okay. Uh, okay. So these are three things you use. Okay. Uh, and it's something called deliberate practice. It needs practice. Here's me. This is actually me drawing a few years back. I tried to draw Snoopy dunk a ball. It's not, it doesn't come right the first time. I, I, drew, I just kept on drawing again and again and again. This is drawing, you're having fun. And I'm using a pen. If I'd use a pencil, maybe only once, but as I keep on practicing, you can see the evolution. See, it, one of the tricks about drawing and even artists knows is that the first time it doesn't turn out so nice. So if you're a teacher, if you're a teacher and you want to draw in class, make sure you draw it, I say about at least 10 times at home before you want to. Um, draw in class and, and maybe test it with your colleague and say, do you understand what I'm drawing or not? And then go to class. Don't go to the class the first time and hope that it's going to give you right. Cause you mess up first. Even I used to mess up a lot. You can see here how many times I draw Snoopy to get him. To, I don't even know which one I was happy. I don't sure I'm happy with anyone. But anyway, it takes, it's keep on drawing. But once you've mastered it and you remembered it, it's easy. You go to class, boom, you can draw the heart, the lungs or whatever you want to draw a car, a breakdown of a, a, a process, you know, it's, it's not a problem. But you need to practice a few times, okay? That's what we call growth mindset. We want to develop that growth. Growth mindset is the idea is that the more you practice, you'll get better. It doesn't matter, you know, it's not, it's not something that I'm born, I cannot draw. It doesn't work that way. Drawing is a skill. And, and as long as you have hands and you're quite steady, anybody can draw. Uh, it's just practice, like Lego, building Lego. You just need to understand the shapes and pieces, okay? And don't start, uh, I always say, we all compare, but focus on progress. Because some people learn fast. Some people draw, learn how to draw fast. But some people need time. But doesn't mean you're not going to become good at it or good enough for your teaching and learning. Just focus on your progress. This is the key. Focus on your progress. Okay. Uh, so this is Einstein. No, it's, the, I, it's not that I'm so smart. It's just I spent, spent more time on problems. And the same with drawing, if you want to use it for teaching. And learning. Spend a bit more time. But once you get a hang of it, boom, and you'll notice I've, I've never, I've used, I'm a tech guy. I've used tech for 20 years. When I sit in the, when I've been in a lecture with three, 400 people, I've taken a whiteboard and I start illustrating. There's not, I've not found a tool that's more powerful than that. I'm not, there's no tech tool that I found that's more powerful to engage an audience and get them focused. Is when you go on the whiteboard, especially when I draw things like Darth Vader, <laughs> you, see, you get the whole audience uh, engaged. Uh, it's very powerful. Because uh, when you draw, you, you must remember when you draw, instead of just showing PowerPoint slides and so on, 
uh, you're slowing down the process of learning. You're showing step by step how it comes out. So people, you give time people to digest it. It shows your expertise in it. And, 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 and if, when you draw it out, the students might also find it more valuable to learn. They say, the teacher knows, knows it really well, so maybe I should know it also. Because sometimes when you show on a slide, it doesn't mean you know it, you're just showing a slide. So this mastery is very important, uh, okay? And these are the building blocks, okay? I want to ask you, how many can draw this or not? Can you draw these lines? Can you draw this? Can you draw a straight line? If you cannot draw, you can he get help. <laughs> can you draw a zigzag line? Yes, right? Can you draw a dot? <laughs> Everybody say yes. yes. Right. Can, you, wait, wait, wait. can you draw a dot? <laughs> can you draw a square? <laughs> right. Can you draw a circle? Circle is a bit tough. A lot of people struggle with the circle. <laughs> can you draw a triangle? See, if you look at drawing for 2D drawing, drawing that you use in class, it's all based on this. Somehow, whatever you're drawing has this within your drawing. So this, once you understand this, drawing becomes like Lego. It's a practice. You, the more you practice, you can draw more complex stuff. Start drawing simple stuff, okay? I just want to show you an example. I'm drawing a stick figure here. It's just simple lines. You can see here, I'm drawing a very simple stick figure. But it's perfection lines. But the reason the lines are so perfect, I'll show you later, is digital tools allow you to perfect the lines. So that's why I'm not that I'm so steady. Is the digital tool itself perfects the lines. I will show you now in about two or three minutes, but I just want to show you, see here? Okay. It's all basic shapes. Basic shapes. Okay, I just made the line a bit thicker. That's it. A simple stick figure. Okay. So these are, so let's look at these drawings. If you start looking at this drawing, okay, look at this. Okay, look at this phone. What kind of shapes can you find in this phone? In the chat, what kind of shapes are here? Rectangle, right? Circle. Okay, the phones now don't have buttons anymore. But <laughs> see the line there, which is the microphone, huh? the camera. <laughs> see? So, so one of the tricks, this is one of, just remind, one of the tricks that artists and architects and designers is they learn how to see things in form of shapes, anything. And if you have that ability to analyze anything this, uh, in terms of shapes, basically you can draw anything with practice. You start looking in terms of shapes. And when you start looking at this one, well, this one's very, this one is rectangles and squares, right? Uh, this one, look at this one. A circle, square, line, lines, okay? Okay, uh, are you ready to draw again? It's time to you to draw again, okay? Are you ready? <laughs> you got your pen ready? Okay, this is your challenge. You got, I give you two minutes to draw these three things, four things. Remember, you're not be becoming an artist. I just want you to draw it for the sake of using it for teaching and learning. So I want you to draw these. You got two minutes, 30 seconds per to draw these four items, okay? Try to draw them on your piece of paper. Afterwards, you can show. We will do a video. I will after this. I will stop sharing after two minutes. And then we will see on the video just to share with each other, have a good laugh uh, with each other. Okay, got one minute to go. After I'll stop sharing, then we can see on the camera. All of us can share, we can see together what we have done. Show the grid video. Huh? I'll put in the chat what you have to draw in case you forget. Huh? Tree, house, robot, and cat. Okay. Remember there's no right and wrong. As long as you can communicate, and that's the great thing if you're teaching, you can just say it's a cat. Even it looks like a dog. If you say it's a cat, the student will say, okay, it's a cat. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, okay. Okay, if, if you're ready, you can share your video. I put the grid view just for fun. You can share your drawing. 
It's not about right and wrong. It's about having fun with drawing and <laughs> sharing. And please give comments to each other in the chat box if you like it. Okay, Francis, let's see you. Very nice. Wow. Okay, I like your cat. Fat cat like Garfield, huh? <laughs> House. Okay, well, let's see that. Uh, your robot, huh? Uh, people, are, I like your robot, huh? Motala, your robot, not bad. What about the other cat? Where's your cat? Oh, you, oh separate page. <laughs> cat. Okay, no Shafrina. She draw. Okay, very close. I can see your robot. I notice all of you, your robots look very similar. They, they look very human. <laughs> Uh, very interesting. Everybody, anywhere in the world, the robots we have been programmed. The robot look like a human. Huh? <laughs> okay, I like your cat, Jai Sabo. Your cat. Can you be close or not? Your drawing. Can I see your nice drawing? <laughs> your cat. I, I, is that a cat or a mouse? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, okay. One of the tricks when you teach, uh, even if it doesn't look like what you want, you're you're teaching there, so you can with your your words, it will make it. You just say it's a cat. Even if it doesn't look like a cat, you say it's a cat, it's okay. But say, yeah. So that's the power when you teach. Even if it doesn't exactly look what you want, you communicate through your words, okay? Okay, can everybody just share? So we, can we, Irena, Irena, can we do a screenshot? Just everybody can share. It'll be very nice. Memory, memory of your great drawings. Very nice. Lucy, can I see Lucy? Uh, wow, okay. Oh, I love your cat, Lucy. Very nice. You know, uh, Okay, Prashila. Okay, we have the same group. Uh, uh, Silvanus, did you draw or not? Uh, okay. Okay, very nice. Okay, uh, there's another one, Abel. I know some more, more people coming. Oh, wow. Okay, Kumar. Kumar is sharing but not sharing. <laughs> okay, very nice. Okay, very nice. Very nice. Okay, we keep this uh, as a memory. Thank you very much. Now, I want to share with you something very interesting is that... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, are you familiar with NLP or not? I'll just put this. Uh, let me just put there. Yeah, I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, thank you. Okay. Let's do the blank. Hey. Okay. Okay. Insert slide. Okay. Okay. I'm coming out the screen share again. Okay. So let's do screen sharing again. Uh, okay. Uh, let's go here. Okay. I got the screen share. Okay. So you can see here now. I'm gonna hide. You can see on the screenshot, I have your, this is kind of a memory you can see here. Well, this is what I captured. <laughs> Irene smiling, I got Irene smiling there, okay. Uh, okay, but it's not so clear. But the thing is, well, what I wanted to share with you is, the cat, huh? there's actually a test that can tell you something about your personality regarding the cat. How you draw the cat can actually reveal something about your personality. Uh, I learned this. Uh, whether it's true or not, I don't know. Because, you know, sometimes they, they... But interesting, I just want to share with you. If you draw the cat sideways, you are not... Uh, usually are not so aggressive in terms of uh, approaching people. If you draw the cat facing straight forward, like in, the fa in your face, you're a more, you're a more daring person. Uh, and if you draw the, the behind of the cat, you're a very scary cat. No, no. But actually, they had this test on, on this. is very interesting. On... Uh, on you can actually find something about something's personality about how you draw a cat, okay? But whether it's true or not, I don't know. But it was this on this is on NLP, okay? Okay. So when you draw, this is very important, huh? when you draw, I want to ask you in the screen, I have numbers here. How do you hold the pen? How do you hold the pen? You just put one, two, three, four, just to see whether you have the, they have traditional, one, drumstick view, tip heavy, paintbrush, one, 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 one. Mostly one here. Okay. <laughs> Number five. Okay. Oh, all are one here. Wow. <laughs> I hold more like five actually. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, but the interesting part is uh, if you want to, uh, different ways you hold the pen impacts the way you draw, which is very interesting. Okay. 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 Uh, Irene, 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 uh, four when coloring. Yeah. So you see how you hold the pen. Uh, great artists hold the pen differently when they want to have different kind of strokes or different kind of lines or different kinds. You can see here, tradition is very good for details. So I think most of us when we teach. Hello? Okay. So this number one is very good for details. Okay. Drumstick method, I don't use all of these here either, is for loose marks, layouts, very powerful. Excellent for drawing large. Okay, and then you have filling in large areas. 
is, is a good way to holding the tip. Eh? So this is one way of forcing you to use the shoulder. And then for creating very delicate lines. So every way, so it, the way you hold the pen impacts the way you draw and what you want to draw. Some people use multiple ways. Some people just use one approach, okay? So maybe if, if you're not so steady in a drawing, uh, to, to adjusting the way you hold the pen can impact whether you want to do details or you want, you want to. So keep that in mind when you draw, so don't feel bad. Uh, if you're not very good in details, maybe it's the way you hold the pen that impacts, okay? Uh, okay, uh, and another thing is very important for teaching, if you're using a big whiteboard, this is not a hand movement, okay? Uh, most people draw with the wrist. So that's why when you draw a piece of paper, you might find it easy, but when you go on the whiteboard, the whiteboard is so huge, right? Uh, it, you suddenly cannot draw anymore. Uh, so th this is a skill. So when you, when you use the whiteboard to draw, you have to learn how to draw with the elbow. The elbow. You see that? Then you can get a nice line. If you draw with the wrist, if you want to draw a very long line, very difficult, right? Very long line. But when you learn how to draw with the elbow, uh, you can actually uh, draw a straight line or a big circle very easily. This is something you have to keep in mind, drawing with your elbow. And if you're drawing on a very big whiteboard, <laughs> you learn how to draw with the shoulder, like Bruce Lee. You learn how to draw with the full shoulder. <laughs> you're, just, you're moving your shoulder, you're not even moving your hand, you're just moving the shoulder. So you get that, if you want to do like a one meter, two meter line, you draw with your shoulder. So this is something that you can practice if you're drawing on a whiteboard. Uh, shoulder, maybe it's not so common, but with your elbow, it's very important. Learn how to draw with your elbow. So you're not moving your wrist. Your wrist is just still, but you're just moving your elbow. Because a lot of people, they just draw the wrist. So sometimes if you have problem drawing on a big whiteboard, try to practice to draw with your elbow. Okay. And this is uh, very important. Uh, repetition, of course. If you want to learn how to use it for teaching, you must be very good. And you, re you repeat. And when you go to class, it's easy because you've done it so many times. When you go to class, it's just easy. That's why when I look, look at some of the top teachers when they illustrate, especially in medical, doing anatomy, they have done it a hundred times. So when they go to class, it's not like they've done it for the first time. They know it. And that's why I say any of you can learn how to draw. You just maybe, like I say, if you want to draw the heart, you maybe have to practice 10, 20 times, 30 times. But once you have mastered, it's like cycling. Once you have mastered to draw the heart, you can maybe do it for the next five years. So that's why I say, when you, for teaching, you only need to learn how to draw what you need for teaching. That's good enough, uh, unless you want to be called an artist. So those things, is just a bit of practice. So that's the beauty of, of, of our memory. And I call it linographic memory. It's simplifying, uh, let me just put, uh, simplifying anything and strategically drawing it from memory. So like this character here, I can draw this character from memory anytime. Why? Because I've drawn it a few, uh, few times maybe 10, 15 times. So I, when I say strategically, you should start with the same, like faces, I've discovered when I study some of the top uh, artists in the world, when they draw faces, they always start from the nose or the eyes. They don't start from the outside. We, we most of us start from, I wanna ask you, when you draw a face, do you start from the outside or inside, right? Outside or inside in the chat box. Do you start from the outside or you start from the inside? Inside, okay, Jaisu starts inside, okay. Outside. Most people start outside. Outside and then fill in. Okay. So one of the things I discovered is if you want to draw a nice drawing, especially a bit stylish drawing, you start from the inside. Because when you start from the inside, it becomes much easier to measure. See, when you start from the outside, you might get the eyes wrong, the nose wrong compared to the face. But when you start from the inside, it's easy to measure. Okay, this is about one. And then you go here. Oh, these eyes are just a bit on the side here. And then the eyebrows is, and then you draw that. So it's Actually, from my own experience, it's much easier to draw, especially faces, faces from the inside. Uh, next time you try to do that. When we, remember when we drew Pink Panther earlier? Where did we start? From the inside. And most of your pink, try to draw Pink Panther from the outside. You'll be see how difficult it is to draw Pink Panther from the outside. Uh, so usually when artists, when they, the illustrators, cartoon illustrators, they usually start with the face. I've seen most of them, they start from the inside. Uh, so keep that in mind. Huh? It's a good practice to when you want to draw in class, uh, even if you're drawing body part, maybe start from the inside instead of starting from the outside. Okay. Okay. So these are some simple drawings to, to express different ideas. Like idea, you draw a bulb. Risk, you draw a, a, a bomb, for example. Danger, you just draw waves and then a shark. <laughs> Time, okay, to watch. Target, this is very common. Balance, teamwork, roadmap, break, you know, so... You need to develop your own vocabulary for your own teaching. Uh, and I'm sure you, you what, what, one of the tricks is, uh, after this workshop, you go back, say you, you're teaching, say history or whatever, you identify key things that you would like to visualize. And then you can start with that, for example. Okay. 
this is just for some, I did a visual alphabet. Huh? For, <laughs> so I learned 20, 20, uh, 26 drawings in one shot, <laughs> how to draw a door, and, okay, Bang, skip, skip that, okay. So this is a good practice, of course we can't do it today because this is usually a longer workshop. Uh, create a list of key concepts and process and ideas and that you would love to draw for your subject and teach. So you start with that. That's what you try to visualize and then be able to draw. And then you can go to class or you can create content in, in, in starting with that. That's more irrelevant to you instead of just drawing anything. Okay. Okay. For the next half an hour, we've got half an hour left or 20, 20 minutes. I'm going to show you how I draw digital drawing. Okay. Why digital drawing is very good to develop content, not in class live, but uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, but we're going to do a few things first, huh? okay? So why digital drawing, okay? Who is this? Can anybody guess who this is? <laughs> Does anybody know who this is or not? He's probably the most famous educator in the world today. As most viewed, I think he has most views. I don't think there's any educator in the world that have more views of his content than him. Who is he? Okay, he is Salman Khan, and he's starting the Khan Academy. Okay, this is how he use. You can see that he's using basically the same what I was using. He's using a pen, and he will teach. You can see here he's teaching here. So what he does is he draws, he draws, and he talks into the, to the, to the mic, and he records his video, and his videos have been used hundreds of millions of times. He teaches maths, he teaches all sorts of things, but maths has been, was his specialty, okay? So these are some of the things that you can do. You can't see my screen. Can everybody see my screen or not? Yes or no, can you see my screen? I thought you can see my screen. Oh yes, everyone, okay. I will, uh, I'm not sure, Irene can maybe help you if you can't see your, my screen, huh? I don't know why. Maybe you're blocking with the videos, take away the grid view of the video. Okay. Okay. Okay, I thought for a second, I had that problem last time. I was talking nonstop and then people say, okay. So you can see here, this is how I draw. You can see here, this is me. This is actually my hand. I'm drawing. This is how I draw. I use sketchbook. I'll show you later sketchbook now. Another way, these, two, these, these three girls, they attended my workshop. They didn't have a, they actually drew this without, with their fingers because they didn't have a stylus. So they had the iPad, they actually draw with their fingers. Uh, she draw with a mouse, I think, draw a mouse, just normal computer. And they draw with a handful using a stylus. They can also draw with your finger. But this is a device I recommend that you should get. This is actually the, what he uses. Uh, so I recommend if you have a chance, uh, if, if you want to start, I'm sure all of you are doing webinars now, right? Sometimes you want to illustrate something on the whiteboard and so on. Uh, you do with the mouse. But the mouse can be very stressful because you, you want to get something. The mouse is not easy to move. It, it requires a lot of skill. So when you have this kind of thing, it becomes much easier to, to illustrate, okay? And this is, uh, uh, I, let me just, I will share with you a link. I'll share it later. Uh, okay, let me. Okay, let me just, uh, I'll just find for you. Let me just find the link. Eh? Okay, that's very good. I just want to show you one example. Eh? Okay, this is one example. Uh, I'm not saying this is a good one, but I'm just saying this is a kind of a board, there's a link there. Uh, let's find another one. Uh, they are very expensive. Okay, this one. This one looks good. Okay. There are a lot of these out there, but if you want to use it, because if you're doing webinars today, uh, you're probably going to do some illustration, highlighting, and so on. Uh, so this is an example. Huh? Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen now? or? Sometimes my chat box disappears. I don't know how. Oh, there. Okay. There. Okay. There. Okay. 
Uh, okay, so this kind of thing you should have if you're using. I'm sure you're doing webinars. If you're doing web, if you're not doing, it's okay. But if you're doing webinars, um, it's also good to draw content. But this is the, the, the this is more expensive. This is very expensive. Uh, if you can afford it, it's great. If you can't afford it, then you have to. You don't have to use an Apple tablet. You can use a Microsoft Surface tablet uh, on all tablets as long as you have a stylus, uh, or you can use this. Uh, and, or if you don't have, you can use the mouse. Uh, the, but the mouse is not so easy to do. Uh, it's the worst case scenario, but you can still use the mouse. And these are some of the tools. Uh, you might want to take a screenshot of this. Uh, this this is uh, some of the drawing tools that you can use. I'm going to focus on two. I'm going to let's have some fun. You want to have some fun? Who wants to have some fun? <laughs> what a silly question. Huh? Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to put a link in the chat box. I want everyone to join me and draw. I'm going to share this link. I just I'm going to share this link. And I want all of you to participate and draw. We're going to draw at the same time. Okay, I'm just going to clear this clear frame. Huh? Clear frame, okay. So I'm going to take away all the nice piece of work. I'm going to clear this, I'm sorry. All your hard work, but anyway, let's start again. Okay, I, I'll clear the chat box. This is called Jamboard, which is from Google. Okay, Jamboard Google. And we can all draw at the same time, up to 50 people. We're only 30 people in the room. After 50 people can draw at the same time. So I want you to take some of these tools and have some fun drawing. So this is in other words that you can collaborate. You can see here. You can see, oh, we've got a lot of people joining here. Start drawing, just have some fun. But what I like about it, you can have sticky notes. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. It has also sticky notes, so you can see I've moved the sticky note here. <laughs> you can see here. Yeah? You can post it. <laughs> oh my God, I can see. <laughs> you can see how funny we're all drawing at the same time, all sorts of things. <laughs> uh, but actually, this is actually a very good tool for collaborate, co collaboration. You can actually use it to come brainstorm ideas. Uh, even draw things together, but it gets messy. But this is just having fun. We have actually 13, 14, 15 people here doing all sorts of things. <laughs> oh, okay, very interesting. You can see some, yeah, this is very interesting. I like this one, <laughs> this character. <laughs> you notice now, even if you are sleepy, you notice that using your hands, eh, you're suddenly getting awake. <laughs> so hands is very important in the learning process. Eh? You can see, here. okay, we got 15 plus. We got a lion, somebody uploading pictures. Okay, your challenge is to create a sticky note. Uh, what is the most important thing you learned today on a sticky note in two, three words? Can you do that or not? Egypt. <laughs> That's Ahmad, eh? Dr. Ahmad. <laughs> Can you do that or not? Put, what's the most important thing you learned today on a, on a sticky note? Choose another color, green, orange. Let's see what it, what's the most important thing you learned today. Let's put an effective drawing, okay? Drawing for fun, yes. Okay, what else? We have a picture here. I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to <laughs> the line is going around. Huh? Okay, I'm going to make it smaller. Okay, the line not so important. I love lions, but not for today. Uh, you can do it. Okay, somebody uploads interesting here. Yeah, yeah. What else? Okay, whatever fun we had here. Okay, drawing for fun. What else? Impressive mind mastery, pattern recognition. See, you all learned interesting things before. How to draw basic squares. <laughs> okay, wow, great ideas. Take time. Drawing inspires empathy. Okay, drawing with hands. Okay, and we can actually change education by just simple as a pen and a paper. That's why I say sometimes we don't have to wait for the students to have advanced technology. If they don't have it, we can still implement a very high order thinking skills. They call it HOTS. Huh? The highest level of Bloom's taxonomy can easily be done with drawing, even without all the technology. Bring out the child in me. Wow. Okay, what else we have here? <laughs> this is much more fun than Padlet, though. I mean, if you know Padlet, is it? Oh, look at this. I'm just sorting out all these nice drawings. Important, interesting. Okay, what else? You know? okay. <laughs> so putting all these things. Oh, you want to put it in the middle. But this is really fun. Huh? The only thing, I'm not sure when you can create, no, uh, you can't create a mind map out of this. Huh? But see, innovative communication using drawings. Huh? The link between fingers and brains. So see, all of you have learned what the most important thing you learn has been, has been different, which is very nice. Spicing up my facilitation life. <laughs> Uh, so this jam board you can use with your students. Uh, it's, it's, it's a simple tool. You can draw, but you also can use it for brainstorming ideas or like here, just sharing the most interesting things you learned today. Uh, 
I love this, okay? Going back to basics, always the best, okay? I love this, okay? You become green. I move The green, I'm moving. So I have the power to move you all. Uh, I'm sure you can move the other guys. Huh? So, okay, pattern recognition. So see, you've learned, all of you have learned a lot of things and what the most interesting stuff you have has been different from every person, which is very fun. Great ideas, take time, drawings, inspire, empathy. Okay, it's been moved, okay? Okay, I got one more tool to show you and then we have Q&A and I'm done, huh? Okay. There's a lot of tools. I'm going to go back to this here. Yeah? There's a lot of tools you can use. Sorry. Hey. Sorry, this, this chat box is okay. okay. There are a lot of tools you can use. Uh, most people that draw, not for class, which is draw, use Procreate. It's the commercial tool. What I like to do is use basically free tools because that is scalable to any country, to any school and so on, as long as you have technology. Is I use Autodesk Sketchbook. Oh, not this one, uh, Autodesk Sketchbook. We just saw Jamboard, uh, but now I'm gonna talk about Autodesk Sketchbook. Autodesk Sketchbook is a free tool. It can run on Microsoft. It can run on uh, your Google products, Android and it can run on iOS. It can run on a phone, it can run on a tablet, it can run on a computer. So either way, this tool is very useful. Uh, and let's look at what it can do, okay? Let's look at what this tool can do, okay? Let's explore, okay? Sketchbook, okay? Uh, you can just write, if you, I'll send you a link after this, but if you wanna find it, Autodesk Sketchbook. Once you Google that, you will find the tool. You just need to install the right app for your device. Since you're here, you must have a device. So, <laughs> so you should be able to run it. Okay. So this is one of the most important things. Why digital drawing is helpful. Say that you cannot draw. You, don't, you have no confidence in your lines. I, you know, a lot of people say, I cannot draw. I cannot draw a straight line. So digital technology will take care of that. If that's an issue, it's no longer an issue. Because the tool I share with you has something called predictive stroke. Let's see what it is. So when you draw freehand, if this is freehand, you don't get the perfect lines, even digital drawing, okay? But when you use, see here, predictive stroke. It so when you draw, it will straighten out your lines. So you don't need to worry about that. So once you know that you can draw like an artist, okay? Once you know you can draw like an artist, okay, so... Because this is, I, I show this to artists. Artists say I'm cheating. I say it's not about cheating. As a teacher, we, don't, we, we just want to be able to draw a good circle and a square and put them together nicely. And this is what digital technology does. It actually helps you to draw the perfect line, the perfect circle. And then when you put them together, remember I said shapes? Once you understand shapes, you can build anything. So when you can draw any shape, you can draw anything. Uh, but it needs practice. It's like Lego. You need to learn how to build and so on. And another thing that's nice with digital technology is coloring. Uh, you can see here, I just, I'm showing a video of me coloring. Eh? You can just watch this. Uh, just look at what I'm coloring using. Uh, this is, uh, I'm using on my iPad, but I just recorded. I'm using a sketchbook again. It, I just show you uh, coloring. Eh? You can see me coloring here. You can relax things. You can see, see the power of coloring here. Uh, just keep on watching. You'll see I'm coloring. There's a lot of tools there in, in the drawing tool, uh, which I'll share with you soon. In, uh, this is, the, the view will change if you use Autodesk Sketchbook on the computer, on a tablet and a phone, of course you'll look a bit different. So then I use, uh, see I changed now, they have so many different pens and pencils, you can see on the left side. You can see here, there's a lot of interest pencils. So here I use, I blend it, say I merge it. So I create that nice, see now I say, look at that, I straighten up, so I create the nice, Look at that, oh, make it, so get that flow. I show this to an artist and he was like, my God, so easier. <laughs> so you create that nice sky, right? Uh, simple. I can teach you all this uh, later, but you can do this. It's, it's just using, learning how to use the different pens. There's so many different pens here. This is smudging. So it's basically smudging the thing. And I have some fun with the colors here. Of course, today you, you can't be able to draw. This will take some time, but I'm just showing you the power of the, the, the most important power of the tool to enable you to, uh, to draw. Okay, so this is it. You can, then you can play around the colors, the fill-ins, and so on. And this is the free version, by the way. I'm using the free version. 
which runs on all the devices that I, I mentioned. Okay, I'm gonna skip this, okay? Another one is layers. Uh, one of the powers of drawing is layers, okay? Layers is here, you can see, let me just minimize this one. Layers here, you can see all the layers here? So layers allow you to move things about. One of the things when you draw traditional drawing is that if you draw something, you cannot resize it. So now I can resize it, all right? Uh, and then I can move things back and forward. You can see and now I can, so now I can move the head. So now move the sun in front. So I can now move the sun in front. You can see I can move, move him in front of him. So this is the beauty of you, when you draw, you apply layers. Every, I always tell people when you draw, every item should at least have one layer. So they're separate layers. So later if you want to move them about, change their size and so on, you can do that. Okay. So there's behind, but then I can put it forward. I can make it big. Because sometimes when you draw things, something is too small, something is too big. This is the beauty of using layers and resizing and so on, okay? So that's layers. And this is very interesting, symmetry. I want you to look now, uh, this is very useful when you draw, especially if you're doing architecture. So this is a very simple drawing, okay? Look at that, I draw the Batman sign. Look how fast I draw the Batman sign. <laughs> of course, it's a bit faster now. So it, it draws, when you draw one, this is mirroring. So when you draw one side, it draws the other side for you. Let me just show you one more example, okay? I'm gonna draw, this is a more complicated drawing I did live. I, I draw, can you guess what I'm drawing? Try to, the first one to guess in the chat box what I'm drawing should get some uh, digital reward. <laughs> Try to guess what I'm drawing, who can guess fastest? What am I drawing here? Can anybody guess or not? Who is the fastest to guess what I'm drawing here? Butterfly, <laughs> robot. <laughs> Uh, let's see how fast. Who is the winner? The champion of all visual thinkers. No. Human brain. <laughs> it's not a beautiful brain though. <laughs> Star Wars. We're getting closer. Chopper. Cherry is very close. Star Wars. What is this? <laughs> you should guess now. I'm, <laughs> it's nearly fully revealed what I'm drawing. <laughs> Doc Vida. Darth Vader. Yeah. Francisco. Fast one. <laughs> See, but you notice when, but that's one thing good about digital, you can draw one side and it draws the other side for you, symmetry. So this is, this is using a feature called symmetry. Uh, so, I, so you can, no, I mean to draw like this hand is nearly impossible, so straight. But with digital technology, not the, as long as you know the shapes to use and all that, you can draw it because as I said, it has predictive stroke, it has symmetry. Uh, robot head, okay, if you haven't watched Star Wars, you will not know, but this is trying to draw Darth Vader, okay? Darth Vader. <laughs> and if you want more stylish, you can draw this. Uh, behind, yeah, I mean, is that video? Okay. So I'm just showing you in the tool here. Uh, these are some of the features in the. You can see here when you use Sketchbook, Autodesk Sketchbook, look at the amount of uh, drawing tools you have, the amount of pens and pastels. And so you can imagine. If you want to buy all this, it will cost you thousands and thousands of ringgit to draw all these kind of paint brushes and so on, but you don't need it, it will do that for you. Even here, I can some cool, I'm just showing you some cool lines and all that. Look at that. I'm, I'm just showing you some of the interesting uh, features that it has. They call this, Patrick, look at that. These are some of the brushes and <laughs> in the library. They have so many different cool things here. You even have splash, okay? And that's in terms of pens and pen pencils and so on. Uh, and it goes on, but the features, and we talked about layers and predictive strokes. So there's so many things you can do in this uh, tool. I just, I've given you a taste of it. Uh, and here's another example. When you talk about drawing in class, uh, you learn how to draw, this you can do in class. You draw simple things to create a storyline or ask people to know what is this? What am I drawing? What is the story behind this drawing? Can you guess what this is? Uh, can anybody guess what I'm trying to do? I'm looking for two words. Can you explain this drawing in two words or not? Can you explain, can anybody explain this drawing in two words? Line drawing, no, not the drawing. 
the story. There's something I'm trying to convey. I'm teaching something, right? So what is, what am, what is happening here? Can anybody guess? Children hospital, it's something more. What is the plane dropping? <laughs> what is the plane dropping there? <laughs> a bomb, so what are they doing? Air show, <laughs> dropping a bomb on people is an air show, <laughs> Lucy. <laughs> Killing, okay, we're getting closer. I'm looking for a, a, a terminology. It's two words, it starts with C. Airstrike, it starts with C. Okay, airstrike bomb, fine. I'm looking for something here, something that people do. When we want to kill the red person, we end up killing more people. What is it called? And it, there's a term they love to use in the West when they kill innocent people, or even in the, in, not in, anywhere in the world. It's called collateral damage. Collateral damage, <laughs> yeah, collateral damage. You know, they want to kill one person. For, to kill one person, they blow up even hospitals, right? I mean, this is just an example of how drawings can get people to think and, and so on. Okay, Claude, Claude says collateral damage, yeah. So this is, sometimes when you want to teach people things, you don't have to give them the word or explain to them. You can do it through a visual. You, you get them to curiosity. They ask them to think, and then they start thinking. And then, but the visual is like, why is that bomb dropping on, it only wants to kill that one person here, but it kills all these four people. And why are they dropping on a hospital? Uh, yeah, so it says, Claudia says, collateral drama damage, they claim pinpoint bombing. So you notice how engaging this topic is become because I'm using drawing to illustrate it. Because when you draw out live, if you can do that, you create that curiosity. People are excited. What is he, what is he up to? What is he drawing? Everybody's getting involved in the thinking. And I, I've, when I've, done, I've done this in front of 200 people, 300 people. And I, I notice when I do it, it's like 300 people are watching you and very focused. Because everyone, what is he drawing? And sometimes I have a reward with a chocolate for the winner. And that gets them more excited. So that's why I'm saying when you use drawing in a creative way, uh, it can be very engaging and powerful for the teaching and learning process. Okay. And this is my last example before we go on Q&A and finishing. I, I attended a conference. Uh, this guy talked about this. These are the 16 values that we want to develop in Malaysian education. And this is how we presented it, okay? I'm not saying it's bad or good, but I was like, okay, you're presenting the 16 values. So I went back and I started drawing and this is what I drew. So this is the same thing, but uh, in a drawing format. And, and what you can do, of course, later is to break each one into individual slides. But what I did is I tried to visualize each terminology here and bring it to life uh, through drawings. Just stick figures. These are just simple stick figures, which I will teach in the next workshop. And if you attend the next workshop, which will be on a visual note taking, I will teach you how to draw stick figures. I'll teach you all sorts of things. But today was the purpose of today was to really get you excited about the power of uh, drawing for teaching, learning, innovation. And if you want to go beyond, I, I, I started drawing Islamic calligraphy. I do this all from scratch because I want to figure out how to draw it. So these are some of the things that you can do if you're a, if you're a Muslim, even you're Christian or your Chinese calligraphy or Indian calligraphy, whatever. But this, of course, is Islamic calligraphy. So these are things I draw just using digital sketchbook, Autodesk sketchbook, okay? And coloring, okay. So these are some of the drawings, yeah, okay. So I'm finished now, uh, okay. The last drawing. Can you explain this uh, drawing in two words or not? <laughs> Oh, I forgot. Uh, oh, I forgot myself. What is the? It's what is it called again? Uh, what is happening in his drawing in the first place? <laughs> there's actually a there's a there's a term for it. I forgot why myself. It's called uh, help shark attack. Okay, but you notice somebody's dr drowning. The shark is coming. What are they doing? Yeah, what are they doing? Are they doing anything? <laughs> They're looking. Uh, there's a terminology, I forgot myself, it's two-word ter terminology, is that uh, when a lot of people, nobody does, they don't do anything because everybody thinks everybody else is going to do something. Uh, uh, this, is a pan this is something happens when a lot of people are sometimes looking at, nobody's taking action. Okay. <laughs> but there's a, I forgot the term. Uh, okay, anyway, I, I will share with you later the term. I forgot. I've been talking too much, but two hours already. Uh, okay, so this is another way of showing that when people are in, in trouble, Somebody has to take action. Although there are a lot of people there, people, everyone is expecting someone else to do something, but nobody is doing anything, okay? Okay, so recap. Uh, we talked about drawing for learning. It's very powerful. It can help you improve your focus, improve your memory, and improve your thinking skills. Visual thinking, creative thinking, computational thinking, collaborative thinking, uh, problem solving thinking, problem you know, design thinking and so on. 
And for teaching, it helps you to connect, engage, simplify, and aspire. And in terms of innovation, it can help you to bring your ideas, your imagination, and of course, you can have a lot of fun in the process, as you had. I think you, some of you had a lot of fun drawing and drawing collaborators and so on. So this is what I wanted to share with you today. And I've talked to Irene, uh, uh, and we have, the, we have decided on the 8th of July, uh, coming in the next one, we're going to do something called visual note-taking. And that's where I will teach you actually how to draw stick figures, how to draw uh, difficult, simple things that you would like to use in your uh, class, uh, simple drawing things that you use. It's all about, uh, but of course, we're talking about visual note-taking. It's something like mind map, but with visuals and more creatively done. But of course, you can use it in your class or in your lectures and so on. We will teach you how to draw individual simple, and we will draw together. We will actually draw together and have fun with it in the process. So if you want to attend, okay? Um, but that's what I wanted to share. I'm going to switch off my sharing now, and we can take some questions. Hopefully, can, I know we're already, time has passed. It's exactly six o'clock. I finished on time, but we should have some time for Q&A. So if you have any questions now, it's a good time to ask any questions. Uh, we already shared what we have learned most, so it's okay. So, okay, Lucy, you want to take the camera? I'm going to stop sharing now. Uh, you want to take the camera, Lucy? Okay, Lucy. Let's go. Hi, everybody. Okay, I've put that one on mute. Um, um, sorry, Zaid, my question is from the last time. If I'm allowed to ask a question on PowerPoint, you talked about okay. merging. No point, no point with PowerPoint. <laughs> I, I know it was the last time, but you talked about merging shapes, and I'm so oh. lost. I cannot find this button on merging, on merging shapes. Oh, merging, oh, okay, I, I can yeah, show you now. Show okay, it. let me just show you now. Okay, let me just, I'll show you now. Okay, okay, sorry. That one I can show you now. Okay. I'm going to make this screen small. Okay. Okay. We're, we're just going to go PowerPoint for one second. Okay. Uh, let me do screen sharing uh, my slides. Okay. Yeah, can you see my slides? Can everybody see my slides? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, sorry. I have to share again. I, I pressed wrong. Okay. I'm going to share again now. Okay. Now you can see my slides. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm yep. going to open a new slide, so just to show you. Okay, so first I'm just gonna insert two shapes, okay? We need to have two shapes to merge, okay? Two shapes, I'm just gonna duplicate. Okay, so now what you need to do is, you, you have to select more than one shape to see them. Here are the merge shapes, you see that? But you need to select more than one. Huh? So what I'll do is I'll select these two. Maybe I start with this one, this one. And you see there, on the left side up there, you see the merge shapes there? Do you see it? Can you see in the chat box or in the uh, audio? Can you see it now or not? Lucy. If you, huh? Lucy, you need to confirm. Lucy, do you, you see, see here? What, what, what yes, did I yes. see? Yes, I Please. see. Okay. <laughs> okay. So then you, when you merge, you can merge in different ways. You see that? A different kind of merging. Union, combine, fragment, intersect, and subtract. Okay, you have to play around, but yeah, to, to make this visible, you need to have more than one shape. You need to select more than one shape. Because you notice if I just select one, I double click format here, it's invisible. I need to select more, one or two or three, or, I mean two or three or four, then you can merge. You cannot merge one shape, right? So you have to have more than one, then you can combine. Uh, now, if you don't see this button at all, yeah. it could be that you're using a PowerPoint older version. I don't know what version you're using. I'm going to stop sharing now, but you might be using an older version. Uh, so if that's the case, I'm not sure whether it started in 2013 or PowerPoint 2016. I'm not sure. But it, it, and if you're using 2007, definitely not there. I don't think it's in 2010. So I think it started in 2013, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it's 2016. So if you don't see that button at all, maybe you don't even have it if you're using an older version. Yeah, I actually don't have it. Um, oh, okay. Because I tried <laughs> okay. and I didn't have it, so I thought maybe I need to upgrade my PowerPoint. Yeah, if you can, it will be great because uh, it's a lot. PowerPoint has actually improved a lot. I think the late is very. Good. I didn't like PowerPoint. If you go back ten years ago, I was not a big fan of PowerPoint. But now with all the new features, it's pretty powerful. It's pretty powerful. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Sorry. Okay. Thank uh, you. Let's see. Okay, I just want to check what the questions we have here. Uh, give links to drawing, uh, tools of drawing, okay. 
Let me just, while they're talking, I'll just give the links to drawing tools here. Uh, let me just see. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, let's do sketchbook. I'll just share with you sketchbook here. In the chat box, you're getting sketchbook now. Jamboard, you can just, well, let me just have to, I myself have to Google. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jamboard. Uh, the other ones, uh, I will, you just have to uh, take the link. These are the two tools I share with you. Okay. Uh, these are good enough to start with. Uh, okay. What other questions do we have here? Uh, uh, okay. There's someone with their hand up. Kalawole. Uh, Okay, let ask. I'm. I'm not. I'm, I don't know if I have the power to control them. They can open them up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think he's just waiting to be invited. So that's okay. okay you you can invite yes. them. I, I, I just okay. invite them. No problem. Kalawole, no problem. Kalawole, you can you can put on your 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 video and ask or your um, audio. Okay. Hmm. Probably you answered this question already. It's okay. I think okay, Francis wants to attend my PowerPoint session. I can send you the recording of the PowerPoint session. <laughs> I can send the recording. That one I'm done already. I'm done with that one. Uh, I won't be doing that for a while. It's not my favorite topic, but it's I do it because it's very helpful for a lot of people. Uh, the PowerPoint one. Okay, let me just. Any other questions while I'm doing the. I don't see any. I think we can we can come to a close. Okay, if there's four new questions. Uh, okay, uh, Lucy can. Okay, would you recommend any specific tool for medical disciplines? Um, uh, I'm not sure that one because that uh, I've been more generic. I'm sure there are tools. I wouldn't recommend anyone because I think it's, you have to do a bit of uh, research there because. I would just recommend generic tools, but I'm sure there are specific tools within medical tools to help you to draw medical. Even if you don't have to draw, you can use the tools available there. Because I remember when I worked in a medical university, there are anatomic tools that allows you to draw or just extract the different body parts and then you can highlight on and so on and, and add points. So I think you have to do a bit of rec uh, research there. Uh, we have the PowerPoint recording. Yeah, Irene, Irene, maybe we can share the PowerPoint recording, uh, the URL. If you can share that now, it would be nice. Uh, while waiting. Uh, yes, I need, I have lots to learn from Lucy. Please, I need the recording of PowerPoints. Everybody PowerPoint. <laughs> is there any tool for mats drawing? Uh, I'm sure there is a tool for mats drawing, but I can't think of anyone. Oh, there's a lot of tools for mat drawings, I'm sure. Uh, I was testing one yesterday. Yeah? There was actually two for mats drawing. Yeah. Okay, just think. Anything drawing chemical structures? Chemical structures? Uh, that one I'm sure there is. I, I can't specific say a specific, because even if I recommend, it would be just Google searching. But there's definitely tools for uh, chemical structures. Uh, I'll be okay. Panel session. Okay, it is awesome. Please come again. How would you share recording link? I don't. Okay, suggest some tools then. Uh, Sanjay, what tools for what? Sanjay says suggest some tools then. What was your first question? Because the, the quick questions don't link. I can't remember what was this question. Or oh, for Matt's drawing. Oh, I, I I cannot specify a good tool for Matt, Matt's drawing. Okay, uh, e draw, uh, e draw mind mapping, uh, map mind. Okay, the thing is, when I'm talking about drawing, is that I want to teach you how to draw yourself. If I'm not sure, but most mind mapping tools, they have clip art, so you choose clip art to put. See, the the whole problem with this is that uh, is that it works very well when you have things that are relevant to what you're teaching, but if you're not. Then you struggle, you, you cannot put picture, you, you cannot. So what I'm trying to emphasize is if you learn how to draw, you'll be never limited by the tool or the images. You, you'll be liberated. In other words, you'll be liberated to do any visual you want. And I think that's one of the challenges that we have today is teachers, uh, they don't know how to do their own visuals. They just reuse everything out there. And most of it is copyrighted. So even when they want to produce a book, yeah, uh, most of the images that they put in their PowerPoint slides or in their notes, they can't use for their books. But once you can draw your own illustrations and so on, you're liberated. And even if you can't draw so well, at least you have the base and then you can outsource it to other people uh, later. Uh, most of my, don't worry about my drawings. I, I'm not going to pursue anyone in my uh, uh, drawings. Okay, let me just share with you. Uh, 
I will I will do screen sharing again. I forgot to share something. Okay, uh, let me just share here. Okay, I'm going back here. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Here we have uh, uh, things that you want to might want to join. I will share the link here. Uh, this group is very good. I this is a generic group. It's not just about drawing. It's that I share everything I learn, everything I find, I curate. Uh, this is my YouTube channel. I talk about, it's not, I don't use it that much, but I have a lot of videos on different things I do. If you want my drawings, the easiest way to find them is actually I've compiled all my drawings here. It's not a good place. Uh, I'm compiling them on Google Drive instead, but to know what I've drawn, I've captured actually everything on Instagram. I, I've actually captured since I was uh, 42 years old. <laughs> I've captured all my drawings on Instagram just to keep a history. So you can actually see how bad my drawings were from the start <laughs> until now. So you can see the history on, on Instagram. Uh, yeah. So most of my drawings, I just put my signature because that's what uh, people do. I, I'm not into, I create the comic because for me, my drawings are, all can be reused. Uh, if you sell them, I'm not happy. I want some money for it. <laughs> but if, if I don't know, what, do I, what can I do anyway? But I'm just happy you use them. If it can help you in your teaching and learning or help you in your own learning process, I'm very happy. Because as a Muslim, I know I'll inshallah get barakah from Allah that uh, my work has helped someone in some way. So I'm not worried about that if people use my drawings. Even if they claim it's theirs. But it, my drawings are quite unique, so it's very difficult to say I drew this. <laughs> okay. So I'm done, uh, Irena. Uh, thank you very much again for coming, all of you, participation. I, if anything I've done wrong, inshallah, you forgive me. Uh, I would like to thank again Emerge Africa for inviting me, Jakob and Irene, and of course, Dr. Ahmad. Uh, I really appreciate everything. And I wish you the best uh, in all your adventures in drawing. And I hope you attend my next one on July 8th, right, Irene? We have decided July 8th, huh? Yes. <laughs> that one will be very interesting because that will be, now you've got the idea, you're excited about drawing, let's get busy drawing. Uh, really drawing eh? uh, and visual note taking with a focus on visual note taking, which is to me the most powerful note taking method that is for memory and creative mindset. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Two hours. Wow. Thank you. We appreciate you. We look forward to, to, to visual note taking. I'm sure we'll have quite a number of people there. Um, remember, if you join the, face, uh, the Image Africa Facebook page, uh, there's a lot of things that uh, Zaid is also sharing with us. So please, please uh, make sure you join the page so that you can follow on, on the upcoming events. Thank you sure. all for being here from all over. And we appreciate you and see you next time. Bye for now. Okay, bye. Assalamu alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So what do we do? We just look silly or? <laughs> are, uh, are you going to leave the meeting or uh, how does that work? Okay. Uh, no, someone else actually does the... the, the oh, okay. The, He'll do the editing the later. And, I will chop. Yeah, yeah uh, we okay. do the editing later. Yes, please. Yes. And Somebody wants to join the now. session now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's Priscilla. Like she, she was there. <laughs> Olufemi, would you like to say something? Although we are closing yes, now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it's been ahead. awesome, and uh, yes, it's been awesome, and it's uh, a great opportunity. Uh, we missed this all the Ibadja webinar, but today I am happy to rejoin you again. It was uh, a time well spent, and I appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, Irene and the team for putting up this great, 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 great learning opportunity. Thank you very much for being a part of it. We took two hours of your life, so. <laughs> I really yeah. thanks, like, I really thanks. You have done a very wonderful job. I loved it. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yes, anyone else? You can take the mic and take the... We are finished now. We are almost closing the room anyway. Very, so... very nice. Very nice, Babniar, <laughs> you have organized. I congratulate you on this wonderful full event and I will join okay. on 8th July also. And please remember to give us feedback. I have shared the, 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 the link. Please, please. Okay, oh, okay. Please I, will, like I, will, I will. I will. I will. I will. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you everyone and we'll see you next time. Thank you, you so much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
Thank you, brother. Thanks, Dad. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad, very much. Yeah.